Okay, let's get started, everyone. And um, thanks for your patience on the delay. Um, I've been at war with a printer this morning, so bear with me. Shoot. Welcome to the January 21st, 2022 virtual meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Timmy Knutson. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I am the chairman of the ZBA. This week, we celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day. This year, I learned that the roots of MLK Day becoming a national holiday started here in Chicago. When Chicago's first black mayor, Harold Wash Hay Day, a commemorative and paid holiday. The bill was vetoed by the governor. Mayor Washington reintroduced the bill twice before it was finally passed in 1973. Illinois has celebrated MLK Day since although it wasn't until 1986 when the holiday became a national holiday, which again was much to the credit of Harold Washington. Equality, civil rights, and respect for all people, especially for black Americans is as pertinent as ever. We honor Martin Luther King Jr. and his teachings today and always. As a personal announcement, two of ZBA's most consistent Zoom meeting viewers are celebrating some big milestones. This is personable to personal to me, so just bear with me, but I want to wish a big happy 80th birthday to my grandmother, Judy Benelli, and happy 60th, happy 60th anniversary to her and my grandfather, Ray Benelli, who happens to hail from the back of the yards neighborhood here in Chicago. You're both a huge inspiration to me and keep the ZBA feedback coming so long as it's positive. Finally, I'd like to welcome Vaishali Rao to the board today. Vaishali is an incredible lawyer and partner at the law firm Hinshaw and Culbertson. She's very committed to service and civic duty and is a recent alumnus of Leadership Greater Chicago. She is a mom to two children, an avid traveler, hiker, and reader. We're super excited to have Vaishali joining us today and many times going forward. On to business. First, I'd like to take judicial notice of the fact that on January 7th, 2022, the governor of the state of Illinois signed a disaster proclamation declaring all counties of the state of Illinois a disaster area due to the COVID-19 public health emergency. This disaster proclamation is in effect until February 7, 2022. Thus, Section 7E1 of the Open Meetings Act has been met. Second, I'm making a determination pursuant to Section 7E2 of the Open Meetings Act that an in-person meeting of the board is not practical or prudent. Similarly, I am also making a determination pursuant to Section 75 that because of the disaster declared by the governor, it is unfeasible for at least one member of the Zoning Board of Appeals or its chief administrative officer or its chief legal officer to be physically present as, at the meeting place in as much as there is no physical meeting place. Third, this meeting will operate under the emergency rules governing the conduct of remote public board meetings and provisions for pu remote public participation, promulgated first by my predecessor and now by me, and which are posted to the board's website. In line with these emergency rules, today's meeting of the ZBA is a virtual meeting that is being simulcast to the general public via live streaming. It is also being recorded. We've established these virtual meetings in keeping with the governor, the general assembly, the mayor, and city council's goal to continue government functions while maintaining transparency and public safety. But there are technical limitations to this format that we must collectively manage, particularly with respect to the presentation of new evidence during a hearing, the ability for applicants and objectors to resolve objections or amend proposals during a hearing, and the participation of large numbers of people. As a result, any material to be presented to the board, whether by applicants or members of the public, was required to be submitted in advance of the meeting. For those of you who do not appear regularly before the board, I will go over a few things. Number one, we are operating under the emergency rules. So for all applicants, objectors, and their attorneys, if you did not send us your exhibits by the cutoff date and time, you will not be able to reference them. Number two, all participants will be listed as attendees within the Zoom meeting until your matter is called. At that time, we will transfer you to a panelist. There will be a short switch over where you will lose the feed, so don't be surprised by that. Number three, if you are here in opposition to a matter, when your matter is called, please raise your hand so that we know you are here and may transfer you to a panelist. 
Number four, once you are all set as a panelist, pre please present your case. Board staff will be presenting the PowerPoint exhibits for everyone as we normally do, so you'll not need to manage sharing your screen. Number five, please be mindful of background noise and please mute yourself when you're not speaking at all times, including now. This will really make it easier for us to manage the matters. Number six, in addition, please note that we have a court reporter preparing our record. So it is important that two people do not speak at the same time. If this happens, you'll see me muting people. Number seven, if you are an active participant in this meeting, please do not watch the live stream. This will cause audio interference. Let me repeat that. If you are an active participant in this meeting, please do not watch the live stream in tandem. Number eight, please make sure you identify yourself when you are speaking. This goes for attorneys, applicants, members of the public and board commissioners. Since all of us are remote, and our court reporters cannot always see who's talking at any given time. I will also be administering oaths for each witness individually to accommodate for this. Number nine, if an applicant or anyone in opposition to the application has any technical issues presenting their case and is unable to proceed, we will attempt to continue the matter until the end of the call to create time to resolve the issues. If unsuccessful, we will continue the matter until a subsequent meeting. Number 10, after your matter or matters are concluded, please have please leave the Zoom to ensure adequate capacity. If you are interested in continuing to watch our meeting, which I hope you are, I encourage you to watch the live stream, which is accessible from our website. Fourth, I hereby designate alternate member of the ZBA by Shali Rao to serve in place of regular member Brian Sanchez for this meeting. So again, we welcome by Shali. Now, I'd like to call this meet, virtual meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals to order. I will take a roll call to establish quorum. Commissioners, after I call your name, and you state that you are present. Commissioner Salt. Present, I can hear and see you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Rao. Present. Thank you. And just to confirm, Commissioner Rao, can you hear and see me? I can. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Esposito. Present. I can hear and see you. Thank you. And Commissioner Toya. Present. I can hear and see you. Great. I'm present as well, so quorum is established. Chairman, this is Kamal. I just want to let you know that your internet keeps uh, going out and you freeze. So okay. uh, you may want to move closer or to your Wi-Fi or something. Okay. Um, I'm in a high rise, so um, downtown. So Kamal, can you just let me know if it gets particularly bad? Uh, yes, Jim, I will. Thank you so much. Sorry, everyone. Um, okay. Uh, the minutes of last month's meeting have been distributed. Unless there are corrections, I move that we approve the minutes as distributed. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. Great. I vote, I vote yes. They're approved. I move that we approve today's agenda. Commissioner Toya seconds. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. The agenda is approved. Now we're going to take continuances and withdrawal. Um, I've got a few noted that have been uh, coordinated with DPD. So let me just go down my list. And then at the end, I'll open it up for anyone who wasn't called. First, in line with the emergency rules, yesterday I continued uh, matters 36-22-S, 37-22-S, and 418-21-S until February 18, 2022. No further notice will be given with, for these continuances, but if anyone's on and has any questions, um, please speak up now. Okay. Um, 
let me call uh, bu, 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 or let, to repeat those just so that the board has it. The matters we just continued in line with the emergency rules were 36-22-S, 37-22-S, and 418-21-S. Okay, is anyone here for 10-22-S? Okay, so 10-22-S is going to be continued on the right just one month, which brings us to February 18th, 2022, because the there's a companion variation that needs to be on to everyone for any, any confusion there. But again, 10-22-S is being continued on the record. Chairman, this is Nick Patikas on behalf of the applicant. I'm sorry, I was uh, joining as a panelist. I apologize. This is the core reporter, Mr. Patikas. I can't hear you. All right. Nick Fatikas, F-T-I-K-A-S, on behalf of the applicant. And again, we did discuss this with staff. Um, so I just wanted to make sure you knew I was here. Great. Yep. Thank you, Counselor. I, I appreciate that. Um, and again, we're going to see you just next month on this one. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, how about, is anyone here for 11-22-S? Chairman, that's, that's also one of my cases. Again, Nick Fatikas, for the record, uh, we are working, continuing to work with the Department of Planning and Development on landscape and driveway access review. Um, I, I believe staff was uh, recommending a two-month continuance. Yep, good. That one um, agreed, Nick. We've got to do two months just because it's on, on uh, substance in that process. So um, for calendar number 11-22-S, we will continue until March 18th, 2022, and no further notice will be given. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, is anyone here for calendar number 13-22-S? Mr. Chairman, Tom Moore. Hey, Council Moore, good morning. Good morning, thank you. Uh, we've been working with uh, Nancy and planning and, and uh, there's some concerns about uh, curb cuts and traffic patterns and landscaping and number of uses. And so um, there may even be uh, a necessity since the, the property line goes to the street line, there may be a, a need for a variance on landscaping. Uh, so uh, we would request the two month uh, continuance to try to work all that out. Yep, great. Thank you, Councilor Moore, for the explanation. Um, and um, we will be continuing that matter again for everyone 13 22 S, um, two months to March 18th, 2022. And no further notice will be given. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. How about, is anyone present um, to speak on calendar numbers 22? One second. It's calendar numbers 22-22-S and 23-22-S. Um, good morning, Mr. Chairman. This is Nancy Radsvich from morning, the Nancy. of Community and um, Sorry, Department of Planning and Development. Um, we have been working with the applicant's attorney on this. I'm not sure if uh, she's on this morning, but I did speak with her yesterday. Um, we've been going back and forth and with Steve Valenziano, um, trying to pull together some of the history of the site to get a better understanding of the, the parking. So um, we just wanna make sure that we have all the information and can get that done um, correctly um, before this comes forward. We believe that can be accomplished in one month. Okay. Um, I think because this one is on the substance, Nancy, and we're, we're really just doing one month for process related um, yes, matters, um, 
we are going to hear this one um, in March. Does the department have any issue with that? Yeah, and again, I don't know if the attorney is on, but she mentioned that there were some concerns related to some things going on with um, BACP. Okay, yeah, I think the attorney on this one is uh, Talar Berberian. It is, yeah. Talar, are you on? Um, let's see, uh, maybe we don't have Talar on, but I am going to go ahead and. Chairman, I, I'm just promoting Talar. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Morning, Councillor. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm very sorry. I had some connectivity issues. Um, I am too, so don't worry. <laughs> um, I, I missed what occurred. So we, the department has asked for a continuance on our matter for um, until February. Yes. Um, we understand yes. that going to work with them to provide any outstanding information between now and then. Okay, and my uh, question here is we have been, um, I, I just want to get if there's a reason why it should be February as opposed to March, because um, we're, we're well, continuing two months. Sure. So our client is currently, um, it's an existing business that they cannot get a business license until we clarify um, the issues with the zoning. And um, the, the additional information requested has nothing to do with, well, has little less to do with our um, operation than with the operation of the entire building. And so the department want, wanted to get more information about the uh, parking requirements for the remaining tenants in the building, not, not necessarily um, a question about whether we have enough parking to to satisfy our use. And so um, we're hoping we can resolve those super quickly and then, um, you know, not run afoul of our client's ability to get their license for an additional month because we've been waiting now and, and we've provided the department with the information they're looking for. It, it's now from an, a third party. So, okay. I mean, yeah, that's the reason. Okay. Yeah, and thank you, Counselor, for that explanation. So, um, and Nancy, Nancy, go right ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say for additional clarification, it is actually tied to their parking because whenever we do parking determinations, when those are required by zoning, we need to take it in context for what's happening on the entire zoning lot. So, so they're required since they're splitting these businesses, this existing business in two, we're required to complete two different parking determinations for each of those individual spaces. So we do need additional information from them to complete those both for the businesses themselves as, as well as what's happening on the zoning lot as a whole. And then there's also some historical information that we need to, to check just in the zoning, um, hopefully in the zoning archives. Okay, um, okay, it sounds like everyone is, is working together and I'm getting um, feedback on, on this one in the background that we should be okay with one month on this one to keep to process. So um, again, for everyone, these are calendar numbers um, 22. Uh, now that I have my agenda printed, let me make sure I get it right. 22-22-S um, and 23-22-S. And we'll continue these one month which brings us to the February 18th, 2022 meeting. And no further notice will be given. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yep, thank you. All right. How about, is anyone here for calendar number 32-22-S?
Good morning, Chairman. Uh, Chris Leach on behalf of the applicant 1010 West Madison Partners, LLC. Good morning, Councilor. How are you? It's fine, thank you. Um, it was my understanding that the Alderman's office, uh, Sigjo Lopez, Alderman uh, Sigjo Lopez's office was going to ask for a continuance. I'm just on to make sure uh, to monitor that. Great. Okay. Yeah, we, um, we have yes, that. Uh, Director of Legislative Affairs for the 25th Ward. That is uh, my same role here today. Yeah, we were, we were just trying to express that, uh, just need a little bit more time and would request a deference for one month. Great. And, and the applicant has no, no objection of that, Chairman. Okay, perfect. Okay, yep, thank you everyone for coming on. And um, uh, for this one, we're gonna be continuing into March for our, for our regular, um, our regular two month continuance schedule. So this will be heard on March 18th, 2022. And again, for everyone listening, it's 32-22-S. Thank you. Thank you. Thank no you. Yep, thank you. And no further notice will be given. Thank you very much. Okay. So um, continuing down the list, is anyone here for calendar number 485-21-Z or 486-21-Z? Good morning. This is Taylor Nessie, Director of Zoning and Urban Development, representing Alderman Michelle Smith in the 43rd Ward. We are requesting that this item be continued. We had initially had the applicant request a continuance in the November hearing due to a response to not enough time for community review. It's our understanding that the applicant has since had to resubmit documents to the city, which necessitate more review before a denial can be issued. So we are asking that this item be continued until March so that they can obtain the necessary denials to pursue variants for a second time. Yep, okay. Uh, thank you, Taylor. Um, and just give me a second, please. And Nancy, are, are you still on? I am, but I'm unfamiliar with this. Okay. Um, I believe the counselor on this one, I, I think it's John Carthy. Um, John, are you on yet? I, I am here. Thank you, John. Um, so John, we're discussing 485. Dash 21 dash C and 486 dash 21 dash C. Um, and the representative from Alderman Smith's office um, uh, just brought up a request for a two month continuance, um, explaining, if I'm right, Taylor, that there needs to be some sort of new denial. Correct. Okay. And we have no objection to the two month continuance. Okay, so John, is that your impression as well? I'm sorry. Just, I just wanted to make sure, John, that you're on the same page here. Yes, uh, we're speaking about 485 and 486. Yep, yep. And we are uh, uh, agreeing with a two month continuance that the Alvin Manic office is requesting. Okay, so do you know what the new denials are for? Uh, yes, it, it's uh, uh, kind of an interesting situation. Um, our architect presented plans uh, and we went through the entire process uh, with other plans. Uh, the variations will be the same as, as we proceed, but uh, the, uh, instead of a flat roof, we now have a peaked roof. Uh, and, and several other things that are uh, of, of minor detail, but are uh, uh, we have not uh, shown them to the community and, and to the aldermanic office. Uh, 
but it's my understanding we will not be seeking any other variations. Uh, it's just that the um, original uh, plan that was presented is different than the plan that we had uh, uh, shown to the community. And so that we want to uh, correct any, any possible misunderstanding. Okay, that's helpful. So it sounds like the relief, um, the relief at least is staying the same, the variations are staying the same. There's just other details to be worked out. Correct. Okay, um, so understanding that you'll be communicating with the department in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and continue um, these matters 45-21-Z and 486-21-Z to March 18th, 2022 as well. And no, no further notice will be given. Thank you, Chairman. Yep, thank you both. All right, is anyone else on to request a continuance or a withdrawal? Um, we'll give a minute, but raise your hand again only if you're on to request a continuance and withdrawal. Chairman, just want to bring it to your attention, this is Klaus, that we also have Alderman Raboyas and Alderman sure. Burnett and Alderman Austin under attendance. Thank you for that, uh, Kamal. Um, so let's um, uh, 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 let's sort out just who who is on for what. Um, so Alder people, if you could uh, if you could unmute and, and just so we can get a clarification of what um, you're on for so that I know when to call you, that would be helpful. Alderman Raboyas, I, I think I see you unmuted. That is correct, Chairman. I'm here. Great. So I just wanted to um, just to, to figure out when we'll call. Oops, you're freezing up. Well, you just to clarify ahead what, what you're on for, and we'll make sure to mark to call you. I have th uh, a continuance at 34 dash two, two. No, I'm sorry. Uh, continuance 367 dash 21 dash S. Uh, uh, 3557 North Long Avenue. That's one. And then I have the two of them uh, for the same address, 34-22-S and then 35-22-Z as in zebra. With the address known as 3714 West Belmont for both. Great. Okay. So Alderman, just to confirm, are, are you um, on, on 367, you're asking for a continuance? No. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, no. Okay. No. Um, uh, so you're, you're here just to speak on those matters when they come up, correct? That is correct. Great. Okay. I'm going to mark this and, you know, um, we will, we will call you when they're up. It looks to me like both are later in our session. Um, so I don't know if you want to correspond with, with our staff, just so you know when to come on. Okay, who do I touch base with? Um, Victor Ressa is, okay. is best in, um, we can give you a heads up, but it'll be several hours before these. Okay, start. all right, thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, um, I believe I see Alderman Burnett. Alderman, are you on? Yes, I'm on. I'm, I apologize. I'm in the briefing at the same time. Um, so I'm, I'm just uh, trying to hear out uh, what's happening with 1414 North Wells. I think that's in my ward. Yep. And, and do you have any anybody testifying? Who's the lawyer on that? And do you have anybody testifying against it? Yeah, let me, um, one second. Let me find the matter number. I think it's six. Thank you. Okay. Um, and it looks like Patrick Turner is counselor on this one. And we monitor 
So Alderman, this one will come up relatively quickly. It's number six in our order. Um, so if you could, unless you're requesting a continuance, I'll say that if, if, if you could. Uh, so can you tell me, so I don't even recall anybody talking to me about this. Can you tell me what, what's happening at that property? Yeah, so it's a special use application um, for a barbershop and hair salon. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. Not a big deal. Okay. Okay. All right. That's fine. Thank All you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks no, for no, coming no, out, sir. Yeah, no wonder I didn't hear from the community about it. So it's like, okay, thank you. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Have a good uh, other hearing that you're multitasking All right. with. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, last but absolutely not least, Alder Woman Austin, I see you on as well. Yes, sir. I am the absolute first on your agenda. <laughs> you are. It's a continuance before the regular call. Okay, so um, yes. you're on. You're on for for that matter, right? Yes, sir. And I have one on the page eight. I think it is. I forgot to write my numbers down, but I'm here for the duration of, of both of them. Okay. Um. Great. So we will call you when uh 400 is up. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Alderman Gardner is here as well. Okay, Alderman Gardner, go right ahead. Yes, I am here for 36-22-S. Is it Sam? On page seven. Yep. And then also on page eight, I have two at 37-22-S-S and 418-21-S. Yep. What was the last one? Sorry, Alderman. 418. Dash two one dash S is in Sam. Okay, yes. Yeah, so these are our ones we continued. Um, are you familiar with why we're continuing these? I'm not. No. Okay. So, and one of them has been continued a couple times. We need a uh, a real estate land appraiser um, expert report, and the reports that have pre that been presented to us just don't um, fulfill our rules. Um, we sent letters to the experts and to the applicants explaining what we need, but what was presented to us isn't um, sufficient for us to recognize anyone as an export expert or use the report in any helpful way. Okay. All right. So it's continued. Yeah. Both of those matters are continued one month um, to February. Okay. And both, you mean both meaning on page eight? Cause I have three today. Yeah. So it's 36 22 S. Can you repeat that? You went out. Yep, absolutely. So it's 36 and 37-22-S are continued, okay. as is 418-21-S. Okay, so all three. Yep. Okay, all right. And then do, is there anything on our part my office has to do to help in this process? or You don't know. We're trying to, frankly, handhold as much as possible. And we've sent some good examples for them to uh, base reports off of and just trying to get it to something that we can use. Thank you, sir, for explaining that. Yep. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Okay. Um, on 418, I see Ms. Hernandez's hand is raised as well. Uh, yeah, it was just that I, I only received the letter that I got on the 20th was one letter. I've been trying to contact the office since the last continuance. So I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, it's a mute point right now. So <laughs> I'll just stay on the call just to learn more about it. And then uh, we'll continue yeah, on the know, 18th. Our, in our offices, you know, your expert was sent the letter as well. Our office is happy to help with this. We're trying to provide as many helpful materials as we can. Um, we've just, for legal reasons, got to get a report that's truly an expert report, and, and we don't have that. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming on, ma'am. Okay. Um, there's a couple more hands raised. And I, I want to uh, stay to just please raise your hand if you're requesting a continuance or a withdrawal. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm Shanae. I'm not requesting a continuous solar draw. Um, I was trying to see how well, the process was going. Um, because <laughs> I'm Shanae. Shanae Joseph, four twenty two S. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm not. I'm not requesting a continuance or anything. I just was trying to get clarity on the order of the way things were going, just because uh, I actually got to get to the to work. So, but uh, I see. I, I'll just. I see that it's. I'll just keep my headphone in. Okay. And Miss Joseph, you're pretty early in the call. Um, so as things go, um, uh, you're you're matter number four, and so so you'll you, we'll be clear when you're up. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, last call for anyone who is on to request a continuance or a withdrawal. Well, right now, I'll just take the email of the ZBA. The uh, uh, regular zoning for Tuesday. You can oh, miss, uh, okay, there we go. I think the elder person was just not muted. Okay. okay, so that was a jam-packed continuance and withdrawal period. Um, let's get going though with regular call. Um, so with that, I'm gonna call first up calendar numbers 400-21-S and 401-21-C. As everyone gets situated, I wanna note that we do have objectors on this matter. So again, if you're objecting on these matters, 400-21-S and 401-21-Z, this is the time where please just, um, please raise your hand. I'm gonna go ahead and, and please, um, please make sure to have yourself muted while we get going. I'm going to read the Department of Planning and Development's recommendation as everyone gets situated. So calendar number 400-21-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of a gas station with a one-story mini mart, provided that the special use is issued solely to the applicant, Muhammad Abdullah, provided that the development is consistent with the design and layout of the plans and drawings dated November 12, 2021, prepared by BAU Design and Development. And the hours of operation are consistent with other area businesses, opening no earlier than 6 a.m. and closing no later than 10 p.m. For those of you that have your hand raised, we've been um, trying to promote you to panelists. You need to accept the promotion Okay, am I the panelist? Yeah, you are now. Thank you, Ms. Kane. But if you could go ahead and um, just mute yourself and I'll explain the process a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so again, this, um, this matter is a continued matter that has objectors. So how we run cases when there's objectors um, is we start where the applicant will give their case in chief. Um, the board will be asking questions questions during the case in chief at all times. Um, and once we vetted those initial questions, we will move things over to the objectors. Um, we will then give the objectors uh, time to each talk, hoping that A, there's one person kind of leading the charge because what we can't have in this meeting is um, repetitive objections from different people. So really with each objection, we like to hear new information. It's truly quality over quantity. Um, but during your time in objecting, you have the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant. Um, then after that is satisfied, um, we will turn back to the applicant who has a period of, of rebuttal. And, um, and just to make sure, it, if everyone could get muted, that's, that's great. Um, okay, so once we turn back to the applicant, they have a period of rebuttal. Um, where the, the board will be asking questions as well. And then we'll move to a quick closing um, by the applicant. 
So with that, Council Bukarski, I know this is yours, so I'll um, let you take it away. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Am I uh, loud and clear? You are, Councilor. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, this morning, <clears throat> I'm happy to uh, represent uh, Mr. Mohammed uh, Abdallah and the property at 12071 South Halstead. Uh, this, uh, we are seeking uh, for this site uh, a special use to introduce uh, a, a, a gas station. Am I breaking up? Uh, um, Councilor, you're fine. Let me quick just announce to everyone. Again, it's it sounds like Council. someone is listening to the live stream in tandem. If you're a panelist, you've got to turn off the live stream or else we're going to have feedback issues. Testing. Yeah, Councilor, you three. can go ahead. Testing one, two, three. Am I uh, coming in loud and clear? Yep, we've we've got you now. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Uh, the property is located at one twenty uh, seventy one South Halstead. It is. Uh, we are seeking uh, to establish. A, a, a service station at this location with an, uh, a mini mart. Uh, I would indicate uh, to the board at this point that a mini mart is a food store. And so as a, a consequence, a 24 hour food store as a matter of right can be established at this location. Uh, I would just like to, to uh, make that statement. Uh, the property in question measures 108 uh, frontage feet on 127th Street and 123 uh, frontage feet on Halstead Street. Uh, 127th Street at this location is arterial street. Uh, Halstead at this location is a minor arterial street. Obviously, this is a, uh, uh, an important intersection uh, as far as traffic is concerned. Uh, the property in question is zoned C21 Motor Vehicle Related uh, District. Uh, again, uh, a recognition by the legislature that this is uh, a high traffic, uh, high density uh, area. Uh, the site is currently uh, improved with an abandoned auto care center uh, that uh, at one point in its history was a service station uh, with the type of, of service uh, being uh, generally a repair of automobiles uh, and uh, selling gas uh, as an accessory use. Uh, the property was uh, uh, improved in 1974 and has laid fallow uh, for decades. Uh, it is uh, considered a, a, an eyesore to the community. It is uh, clearly uh, not something that is uh, desirable uh, at, at this or any other location. Uh, the proposition is uh, to allow for, to the continuation of the four curb cuts uh, that are, are uh, sought. Uh, the uh, variation uh, that is sought uh, because the site measures 13,284 uh, square feet instead of the required 20,000 square feet. So that variation is also uh, sought uh, in addition to the special use. Uh, the client uh, is uh, Mr. Uh, Mohammed Abdallah who in addition to the uh, uh, having a contract to purchase the subject site 
uh, also uh, owns Falcon Fuel uh, Distributorship uh, and nine other gas stations. Uh, Mr. Uh, Abdallah is uh, an important ingredient in the uh, service station industry in Chicago. Um, the reason uh, for the uh, variation is uh, because we are uh, no other uh, avenue of expansion. Uh, we have uh, 127th Street on one side, Halstead Street on one side, an alley on another side, and a commercial building adjacent uh, to us. Uh, that commercial building, by the way, is a lounge or bar, whichever you, you uh, prefer to call it. Um, I uh, have with me uh, several witnesses uh, and, uh, and as uh, the uh, indication of the planning department is that they have no objection to the uh, introduction or, or recycling of the existing site into a gas station. The only question that uh, presents itself is uh, the uh, recommendation, and it's only a recommendation, uh, that the hours of operation be limited. Uh, I would indicate to you that uh, in addition to uh, Mr. Mohammed Abdallah, uh, I have the architect, uh, Mr. Damien uh, Babiash, B-A-B-I-C-Z, uh, and his associate, uh, Mr. Amro Saeed, I have Mr. Joseph Ryan of LaSalle Appraisal, who is our appraisal witness. Uh, I have Mr. William James of uh, Comeros and Associates, uh, our land planning expert. And uh, uh, additionally, uh, Mr. Rush Darwish, D-A-R-W-S-H, who is the executive director of the Commercial Real Estate Real Retail Association of Chicago, uh, all wish to speak. I would call as my first witness, Mr. Mohammed Abdallah. Uh, are you there, uh, Mohammed? Mr. Abdallah, I think you're just muted. Okay. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. And, and Councillor, I'll go ahead and get Mr. Abdallah sworn in. So, Mr. Abdallah, will you state your name and address, please? Mohammed Abdallah, 43 Old Creek, Pielas Park, Illinois. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Great. Uh, Mr. Abdallah, uh, are you the uh, owner of uh, Falcon Fuel distribution, Distributorship? Yes. And in addition to uh, the fuel distribution, uh, you also own nine uh, gas stations, is that correct? Yes. And you have a contract to purchase the subject site at 12071 South Halston. Yes. Okay. Now, okay. Um, what is the purchase price of the subject site? Uh, 600,000. Okay. And if allowed by this board to operate your 24 hour service station and mini mark, uh, what uh, do you uh, estimate the cost of construction at this site uh, would be? 1.4 million. So that you're prepared to uh, spend almost, not almost, but exactly at $2 million, probably in excess of $2 million by the time we get there. Yes. Uh, on this site. Now, are you familiar with the subject site? Yes. It, it, it's my understanding that the subject site is, is improved with a, uh, a, a derelict building uh, that has been vacant uh, for a significant period of time. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and in, in your opinion, is, is this uh, subject site 
uh, beneficial to the community as it stands. Yes. The, the existing building, uh, is, is the existing building uh, beneficial to the community? Yes. The, uh, I'm not talking about the proposed building. I'm talking about the existing derelict building that is on the site, which is vacant and unused. Do you feel that this, this is a, a benefit to the community? I'm sorry, can you repeat your question, Mr. Bukarski? Okay, the existing building, which is derelict and vacant, uh, do you feel that this uh, is beneficial to the community, having a derelict building and a vacant property? No, it's not beneficial to the community. Okay. And is it your intention uh, to uh, create uh, a new service station with a, a mini mark component uh, at this location? Yes. And it's uh, my understanding that you uh, have uh, a contract to purchase the subject site for about six dollars. Is that correct? Correct. And I apologize. You, I'm so sorry. This is the court reporter. Um, I missed the amount. I'm sorry. Am I not clear? It, it, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You said it's it's your understanding that you have a contract to purchase a subject site for about. Oh, uh, for about uh, six hundred thousand dollars. Yes. And that you intend to spend about uh, one million four hundred thousand dollars on uh, improving the site. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, now, uh, let's uh, address the fact that uh, you intend to sell gasoline from this uh, site. What, um, the gasoline and food, uh, what do you estimate the uh, sales uh, from this site at? Uh, to total sale uh, will be approximately $4.5 million a year. And uh, uh, what uh, percentage or what uh, uh, of that 4.5 million uh, would be gasoline? Uh, about $3 million, $3 million in gasoline and uh, 1.5 in the sea store. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the tax on gasoline, uh, it's my understanding that uh, the tax on gasoline is about $1 per gallon. Is that correct? Yeah, it is a little more one dollar per gallon. Yes, uh, uh, it's about uh, yeah, it's approximately four percent of the of the retail price of the gasoline. So that the uh, tax that would be available to all the public entities is uh, forty percent of the uh, three million dollars of sales. Is that correct? Correct. And uh, what is the tax on the food? The tax and the food is 2% and, and the non-food is approximately 11% mm -hmm. and the cigarettes. Fine. Um, now, let's, let's talk about uh, the security and the construction that you're proposing. Um, it's my understanding that you have interviewed uh, on several occasions with the commander of the police district uh, in the area? Yes, I did. And you've reviewed your plans and received his approval on several occasions. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, it's my understanding that you proposed 36 cameras at the subject site? Yes. Uh, it's my understanding you have uh, enhanced lighting proposed for the subject site? Yes. Uh, it's my understanding that you will have armed security 24 hours per day at the subject site. Yes. Um, it is my understanding uh, that you are providing uh, a minimum of eight new jobs at the subject site. Yes. 
Now, if the suggestion of the board, uh, strike that, of the planning department uh, is, is accepted, um, what effect would that have on your sales? Uh, the effect will uh, potentially lose in at least uh, 30 to 35 percent of the sales. So that that would have a significant negative impact on this subject site, is that correct? Yes, it's a huge ne um, negative impact, yes. Okay. Now, uh, you, you and your architect have presented a site plan which has been accepted by the city, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, in your opinion, is the site currently served by a gas station or food operation? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question, Mr. Bukowski? Is the subject site uh, currently serviced by a, a gas station or in the area? Uh, is there a gas station close? I mean, the, the subject site? Uh, uh, is your, your property? Your, no, your property? no, it's not my property, yes. Okay, so, so that there's really nothing in the area. In fact, I think the you know, testimony uh, later on will show that uh, we, we have a significant uh, shortage of uh, both gasoline uh, and food uh, locations at, at uh, the uh, area in question. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, let, let me ask the... Uh, the seminal question actually if you were required to close your store uh, and gas station for the hours suggested by the planning department would you proceed with this development no so that uh, it would be completely rejected uh, uh, as a business enterprise by you and you wouldn't pursue it, is that? Correct. Right. Now, in your other nine gas stations, are any of them uh, less than 24 hours per day? No, all of them over 24 hours. Okay. And um, I don't remember if I've uh, talked about this or not, but uh, you're providing a minimum of, of eight new jobs to the uh, area? Yes. Okay. Now, if you were required to close for the suggested period of time, uh, would you still need security at the subject site? Uh, definitely, yes, to protect the property. And what about lighting? And, and what about uh, uh, staffing? Yes, lighting and staffing also. Now, uh, the uh, cameras that you've uh, suggested uh, and worked with the uh, local commander uh, on. Uh, can you tell me uh, exactly what, what the uh, program is for these uh, cameras? Uh, this is, uh, it's a total of 36 cameras, okay, and they'll be uh, connected directly to the uh, uh, police districts. So they have, an, they have access to the cameras uh, 24 hours a day, anytime they want, okay. I have no further questions of uh, the applicant. Okay, counselor, do you just wanna, um, you wanna keep going down your list? Because before, before we go to objectors, I do wanna call Nancy Radzovich from the Department of Planning and Development just to get the department's take on um, on the hours, as it sounds like you're um, contesting. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. 
So do you want to um, call your other experts? Oh, yes. Uh, I would call as my second witness, uh, Mr. William James, uh, a land planning uh, expert with uh, Camaros and Associates. Bill, are you there? Yes, I am here. Great. And I'll, I'll swear um, Mr. James in. So Mr. James, will you please state your name and address? William James, business address, 411 South Wall Street, Chicago, Illinois, Suite 400. Thank you. And you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Okay. Uh, Mr. James has uh, spoken uh, previously uh, to the, this board uh, and at uh, hundreds of other meetings. Uh, uh, can we accept him as a, uh, a qualified witness or shall I yep. go through his entire list? Yeah, no. Yep, we do, Counselor. Thank you. We. Um... We uh, recognize Mr. James as, uh, in, as for his expertise. Okay. Bill, uh, you, you, at my request and at the request of Mr. Abdullah, uh, have prepared actually two uh, reports uh, concerning this location. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, the, the first one is an analysis of the special use and variation uh, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, can you uh, it, uh, strike that? Are you familiar with the standards for uh, both a special use and a variation uh, under the terms of the Chicago Zoning Ordinance? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, let's <clears throat> let's uh, zero in on the uh, special use request. Uh, can you uh, comment uh, and, and testify as to the approval criteria uh, for a special use? Uh, yes, I can. Um, there are general special use criteria that apply to all special uses. And then uh, with respect to gas stations specifically, there are um, specific uh, approval criteria for, for gas stations. I believe that we uh, have received approval of the city as to the uh, specific criteria for gas stations as far as setbacks, planting, etc. So if, if you could uh, please concentrate on the approval criteria for a special use. Okay. Um, so there are um, five uh, approval criteria, complies with all applicable standards of this ordinance. Um, the uh, application complies with all of them except for the minimum 20,000 square foot lot area requirement of the subject site. The lot area is 13,284 square feet. So except for that, which we're asking in variance for, um, the subject site and the proposed development plan conforms with the zoning ordinance. Uh, two is in the interest. It is in the interest of the public convenience will not have adverse impacts on the general welfare of the neighborhood or community. Um, <clears throat> and um, I have found that it, it complies with this um, standard. I can go into detail, uh, but I, I, in my opinion, it, it complies with this um, approval criteria. It is compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of site planning, building scale, and project design. Uh, and I have found that it complies with this criteria um, uh, by reason of it being a reuse of, of a former established gas station and convenience store. It is um, uh, located uh, appropriately at uh, two major streets, a major intersection that will be well landscaped and have um, uh, adequate um, uh, vehicular and pedestrian access. Um, uh, and there will be significant investment in the building in terms of architectural enhancements uh, to make it attractive and, and um, uh, uh, a positive use within the neighborhood. Uh, number four is compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of operating characteristics, such as hours of operation, outdoor lighting noise, traffic generation, um, 
In my opinion, the proposed special use meets these criteria uh, by virtue of um, the site being an appropriate location for a gas station, um, uh, the building and sign improvements and parking lot and lighting will be compatible or superior to other commercial uses in the area. Uh, the traffic and noise generation is compatible. Uh, this is a, um, a, a, a commercial corridor, um, a lot of traffic, um, a lot of automobile oriented uses, and this will be consistent with that pattern of use. Uh, the operator, as he has testified, has committed to ensure measures of public safety, in certain, including uh, security lights, security cameras connected to Chicago Police Department, on-site uh, security uh, as well, uh, so that the operation of uh, the business uh, will be um, uh, well managed and uh, will not produce uh, impacts on the surrounding area. Um, and it is... Um, uh, necessary in this location, uh, uh, given uh, the importance of the two intersecting streets and um, the, uh, the necessity of having both gas stations and convenience stores uh, in, uh, in the neighborhood. And five, it is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort. Uh, the proposed drive-through facility meets this criteria by virtue of um, uh, the site plan, which is designed to maintain site uh, distance, site clearance, so that pedestrians uh, can move safely along the sidewalks on the two intersecting streets. Uh, there will be obviously pedestrian access from the public sidewalk to the building, um, and the project will have ample lighting to promote pedestrian safety. So those are the uh, special use criteria um, that um, uh, are in the zoning ordinance, and I believe the subject, uh, 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 the proposed applicant application meets these criteria. And Mr. James, can you go into more specificity on how, I know you noted it's a busy corridor, it is a busy corridor. Can you go into more spe specificity on how this design in particular doesn't increase traffic generation in the corridor? So, um, this as a convenience store uh, will uh, attract business from existing traffic that is going along the corridor, um, both Halstead Street, which is a state highway and 127th Street, which is also an IDOT route, um, have large volumes of traffic. Um, uh, I believe that the use will draw business from this existing traffic. I don't believe it will generate additional traffic from outside the area to come to this location. Uh, that, that amount of, of business will be relatively small uh, as opposed to drawing from the existing traffic that's already there, which is very, very significant. Now, uh, sir, uh, have you also, uh, at my request, uh, made an analysis of other gas stations in the area in locations that are substantially similar to the subject site uh, and, and, and uh, made an analysis of the uh, surrounding uh, residential properties? Is that correct? Uh, can you? Describe yes. that? Yes, I did. When um, this matter first came up and, and we learned of the staff recommendation to limit the hours of operation and uh, the impact the applicant said it would have on his, on, on his application, on his, on his operation, um, I wanted to look at um, what the land use composition was uh, for our site in terms of a uh, immediate 250-foot radius um, and to determine uh, what percentage of land use within that 250 foot radius was, was commercial, industrial, or residential, or other land use to see if there was a specific uh, characteristic of this site that made it unsuitable uh, for a 24, opera 24 hour operation versus other locations. So we identified, uh, and excuse my voice, <laughs> I'm a little under the weather and I'm, uh, my voice is compromised, but uh, we 
uh, looked at 10 other nearby locations that have 24 hour gas station convenience store operations and um, uh, determined the land use composition within a 250 foot radius of those locations. And the, the major conclusion is that the subject site has no greater um, a proportion of residential use than these other locations. And in fact, has slightly less than average proportion of, of residential use. So uh, we could not find that this particular site has a greater um, degree of residential character than other 24 hour gas stations in uh, the, the South the South city Chicago, South side location. And your analysis is based upon uh, how many uh, other locations? Uh, comparing our location to 10 other locations. So that it is uh, in depth, is that correct? Well, I, I think it's a, a good cross section. Uh, and these were uh, the 10 nearest locations all in the city of Chicago. We did not go into suburban locations because we didn't feel those were relevant and this is a matter before the Chicago ZBA. So these would be the 10 nearest um, uh, gas station locations. Um, and so they, uh, they are not cherry picked. They are uh, the 10 nearest locations and we feel it is a good uh, case study of land use um, in the immediate area of um, nearby gas stations. Now, let me ask you a question. If the subject's type has currently improved, does the abandoned gas station uh, derelict building in any way enhance the community in which it is located? No. Uh, vacant properties are um, a negative uh, impact on, 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 I think, any neighborhood uh, and a, uh, a, a, a property that is reinvested in and is put to productive use provided uh, it is uh, operated um, uh, respectfully and, and professionally and conforms with the requirements of uh, the zoning ordinance and other applicable city requirements is a, a, a positive asset to a neighborhood. Uh, and uh, one more question. Uh, the uh, proposed use as a 24 hour operation, uh, in, in your opinion, would it have uh, an enhanced negative impact on the community? Well, are you saying would the 24 hour gas station have um, a more negative impact on the community than the current vacant property? Is that what your question is? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, um, um, my opinion is that vacant properties, especially buildings that are, are, are not um, uh, secured and, and don't have uh, people present on the site can attract um, um, negative activity, can, can invite break-ins, can invite uh, you know, illegal occupations of buildings. Uh, and those kinds of activities are very much more deleterious to a neighborhood than uh, a, a, a viable business that is in operation, even one that is uh, operating 24 hours a day. So it is my opinion that um, a, a well-operated 24-hour um, gas station would produce uh, less negative impacts on the neighborhood than a, a vacant, um, unmaintained uh, uh, property. I have no further questions if the board has questions of uh of the witness. Don, I think we can um, uh, we can keep going with your expert. Um, and then, like I said, I do want to hear um, DPD after your experts, because I want to discuss the hours. I would call as my next witness, uh, Mr. Joseph Ryan. I'm here, Jan. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ryan, please state your name, address, and occupation. 
Joseph M. Bryan, MAI President, LaSalle Appraisal Group with offices at 9455 South Hoyne Avenue in Chicago. And uh, would Mr. Cherry, would you want to swear in the witness? Yep. Hello, Mr. Ryan. Uh, Mr. Ryan, so will you state Morning, your name? Chairman. Will you state your name and address one more time? Nine four Joseph M. Ryan, MAI, 9455 South Hoyne Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60643. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Great. And we acknowledge your expertise, many past experiences. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Ryan, at my request, have you examined the subject site? Yes, several okay. times. Several times? Yes. Okay. Can you please describe the subject site? Site's a rectangular corner site located at uh, 12701 South Halsted Street in the city of Chicago. The site is 123 feet of uh, frontage on South Halsted by 108 feet of depth on West 127th Street. Uh, because the site's uh, just under 14,000 square feet, it requires a variation <coughs> uh, for being uh, to allow a gas station on a site under 20,000 square feet. In my report, I provided uh, addresses and uh, franchise types of uh, 15 or so gas stations in the city of Chicago uh, that have less than 20,000 square feet and operate successfully without uh, any problem. And uh, there are a hundred more gas stations in the city of Chicago uh, that operate successfully on less than a 20,000 square foot site. Now, uh, in your opinion, as a uh, appraiser, uh, is there any benefit to the community uh, by a, uh, an abandoned gas station uh, and a vacant lot? Um, no, absolutely not. Um, um, a viable gas station in this location would be a benefit and a convenience um, for the community. Now, uh, it's my understanding that uh, 127th Street at this location is called a principal arterial street? That uh, that's correct. Um, uh, the chairman had asked earlier about traffic. At this location, uh, traffic counts are just over 20,000 vehicles per day on Halstead and just under 20,000 vehicles per day on uh, West 127th Street. So making it a very viable gas station location with 40,000 uh, cars going by the facility every day. Uh, it's my understanding that th this property uh, cannot be uh, enhanced in as far as size is correct. Is that correct? Uh, no, there's no um, room for expansion. Okay. That there's a, a, a street on two sides, a, an alley on the third side, and a lounge uh, or a bar uh, in a commercial building on the fourth side. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, it, it uh, paying uh, specific attention to the criteria for a uh, special use, um, have you uh, issued an opinion uh, as to such uh, and, and promulgated it to the uh, board? Um, yes, I can quickly go through the criteria if you um, prefer. I would uh, at, prefer, uh, prefer to do that, yes. Well, the, 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 this site was built according to county records in 1974. Uh, it, it was a three-bay gas station, which was um, uh, the industry standard at that time. Uh, as the oil companies 
got out of the retail gas business, uh, they did not want their operators to operate um, uh, auto repair facilities with their product brand. Uh, so these three bay gas stations became obsolete. Uh, this gas station in particular lost its franchise, uh, removed the pumps and operated as a uh, auto repair facility, which has since been abandoned and become an eyesore in the neighborhood. Uh, so it will, once it's rebuilt, will uh, comply with all the uh, applicable zoning standards. Uh, it uh, will have no adverse impact on the general welfare of the community. There are gas station locations within every community in the city of Chicago. Um, as I said, quite often these sites are, are uh, uh, lower than the 20,000 square feet newly uh, enacted ordinance, but uh, this site is viable, uh, curb cuts on two on South Halsted and one on South uh, or West 127th Street. <clears throat> uh, the C store will certainly be a benefit to the community and provide for the public convenience. Uh, the character of the surrounding neighborhood, this is a uh, uh, commercial corridor except or commercial uh, on three corners with a cemetery on the uh, northwest corner of the quadrant of the um, uh, intersection. Uh, they are going to renovate the building so it will be, uh, uh, it's been there since 1974, so it'll be certainly compatible with the area. Uh, planning and, and design and scale, it, it's typical of uh, uh, most gas stations located in the city uh, and the hours of operation, but 24 hours uh, operation is very standard in the um, uh, industry. Uh, there's a restaurant located at 12700 South uh, Halsted, uh, west across Halsted Street that operates 24 hours a day. And uh, there are several gas stations towards Ashland Avenue where the um, uh, I-57 exchange is uh, that operate 24 hours a day. Uh, <clears throat> so that is not unusual or um, unique to this area even. So uh, to arbitrarily say a gas station can operate a <coughs> Uh, less than 24 hours um, based on the criterion, based on, on evidence throughout the city uh, of 24 hour gas station operation. Um, I don't think the, in my opinion, um, 24 hours is, is, is standard for a gas station and certainly not unique. And uh, the, the, the the public convenience and, and uh, the pedestrian safety. Um, this is is in three other locations on the corner he has has drive throughs and uh, uh, there's been no safety issues uh, at this location. So is it your testimony that to have a gas station uh, service uh, mini mark uh, operating less than 24 hours a day would be truly unusual to the Chicagoland community. Yes, mo the mo most of uh, uh, the gas stations that, that I've appraised and I've done work uh, for BP, Shell, uh, Mobile, and uh, uh, Marathon, and I've appraised most of their gas stations in Cook County and the surrounding counties. Um, 24 hours is, is much more normal than limited hours of operation. Is it your testimony that the uh, limiting of the hours of operation uh, of a gas station would produce an undue hardship uh, both uh, to the developer 
uh, and to the community? Well, it, it, it basically goes to the highest and best use of the site and, and the criteria to determine the highest and best use of the site. Is it physically possible, legally permissible, economically viable and the maximally productive use of the site? And obviously it's physically possible. Um, it, it's zoned and, and is legally possible. Uh, the, the, the limiting the hour is the limits and calls into question the economic viability of the site as gas station, which is obviously the maximally productive use of the site because it meets all those other criteria. And, and without that, I mean, that's a business decision, but uh, uh, it would certainly impact the economics of the site and, and maybe critically impact it to where it wouldn't be built and redeveloped. I, I have no further questions of Mr. Ryan does the board. Councilor, I've got a I've got a couple for Mr. Ryan and the board might as well. Um, so Joe, I'm wondering if you could give us somewhat of a vision on how close residential is to this property and also what the hours are like for the neighboring um, businesses. Well, it it <clears throat> I was there during the day. There appears to be a bar just south of 12717 appears to be a bar, um, uh, the, the, which would be open till 2 a.m. Uh, 12700 is the uh, uh, Harold's Chicken that appears to be open 24 hours. South uh on Halsted Street is a series of uh, one-story commercial properties. Uh, the northwest corner, I said, is a cemetery. There is a dollar store at the, um, uh, what is that, the northeast corner um, across 127th Street. Uh, to the east is residential uh, uses. Uh, but that's very common in, in, in the city for uh, the commercial uses uh, uh, to be buffered by an alley uh, to the residential uses. Um, West on 127th Street because becomes much more uh, commercially developed. Um, obviously, the or not obviously, but the cemetery goes for three or four blocks, and there more, and there's more residential use. But uh, after that, it becomes much more uh, uh, commercial oriented, all the way to uh, Ashland Avenue. And and Joe, just to clarify one thing you said. So, do we know is the Herald's Chicken open twenty four hours? I believe it uh, is, yes. Okay. Other questions from the board for, um, for Joe or, or, or generally the applicant at this time? Okay, Councillor, keep going. Okay. Uh I, I would uh, call as my next witness, uh, Mr. Damien Babiars. Uh, Mr. Babich, please state, uh, are you there? Yes, good morning. Good and chairman. with you uh, is, is your associate, Mr. Amr Saeed, is that correct? Unfortunately, he was not able to make it. Okay, so but... you're, you're the architect of record. Correct. Uh, Briefly, uh, and, and I, I don't intend to spend much time because uh, both you and the city have agreed on the site plan for the subject site. Is that correct? Yeah, and, um, you know, Councillor, I'll get um, I'll get um, him sworn in. So, will you please state your name and address, Damien? Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Damien Bobbitt, architect of record, 1302 South Fifth Avenue, Des Plaines, Illinois, 60018. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? 
sorry, um, I didn't get you. So let me just say it again. Um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. And now, uh, just just briefly, uh, have you and the city uh, agreed on a the site plan that has been presented uh, to the board? Uh, yes, it was submitted. Correct. Okay. So that that uh, the uh, city of Chicago uh, uh, and its planning and, and traffic departments, as well as you, agree on the subject site. Is that correct? I believe it's still being reviewed. Fine. I, I really have no other questions as to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Babich. Okay. Um, I've got. I've got one, and, and maybe it's Mr. Bobich, maybe it's it's you, Counselor, but I'm just hoping because we've got objectors on this that um, uh, we can go into the variation a little bit and discuss the need for the variation and any related hardship. Okay, uh, Mr. Bobich, uh, uh, are you familiar with the subject site? Yes, I am. And are you familiar with the fact that, that it contains 13,284 square feet? Yes. Uh, and that uh, the uh, requirement uh, uh, for a uh, service station at uh, in the city of Chicago is a minimum of 20,000 square feet. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we are seeking a variation uh, to reduce the uh, property uh, size from uh, 20,000 to 13,284 square feet. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, is it also true that uh, the uh, subject site is, is surrounded by uh, South Halstead Street, uh, which is a minor arterial street? That's correct. And uh, that it's surrounded uh, on one side uh, by 127th Street. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's a principal arterial street? Correct. Uh, and uh, that uh, on uh, a, another side is an alley. Is that correct? Correct. And on the final side is a commercial building that contains a, a bar, lounge, uh, whatever you wish to call it. Is that correct? Correct. So is it a true statement that uh, the uh, subject site cannot be improved in size? Correct. The, uh, it, the uh, current use of the subject site uh, since 1974 has been a gas station uh, that has uh, morphed into a auto repair uh, facility, which has morphed into a vacant uh, derelict building and a, uh, a vacant lot. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, is it your opinion that the uh, current use is substandard for the neighborhood? Yes. And that it has effect upon the neighborhood. Correct. Okay. Uh, the uh, proposal in your estimate, will it in any way uh, alter the essential character of the neighborhood? Yes, it will. In a positive way. Uh, in, in a good sense, is that correct? correct. Yes. Um, will there be any dim diminution uh, or uh, infringement of pedestrian traffic as a result of the uh, proposed use? There should not be. One thing I would like to add is that on West 127th Street, there are currently two curb cuts, even though one is closed off uh, by the fence. But we are proposing to relocate the entrance off of the 127th Hostage Street, sorry, 127th Street, away from the intersection to make it a safer access. I, I have no further questions of uh, Mr. Babich. Thank you. The board does. Any questions from the board?
Okay, Councillor, I, I believe you've got one more, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. I would call Mr. Rush Darwish. Uh, Mr. Darwish, are you uh, there? Hello. The, um, uh, Mr. Darwish, you're you're on mute and your camera's off. So if, if you hear us, just. Uh... Can you hear me, Mr. Darwish? Oh, there you are. Um, and you are just on mute. Uh, okay, uh, am I on? Yes. On. Yep. yep. I, I do. I do apologize. I was, of course, uh, watching and uh, being a part of it, but I did have to take a phone call, and of course, the timing worked out. You know, right as I was up. So forgive me, everyone. It's a story of my life, by the way. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Will you state your name and address, please? Yes, I am Rush Darwish. Um, my address is one zero three one five South Eighty Fourth Avenue, Pales Hills, Illinois six zero four six five. Great. And you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Great. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Darwish, uh, are you the executive director of the Commercial Real, Real Retail Association of Illinois? Well, John, we're close. It's actually the Community Retail Association, not commercial. So yes, it's Community Retail Association, aka the CRA. Okay. And is my understanding uh, that uh, among your uh, uh, association, uh, you represent approximately 225 service stations, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And uh, the reason that I'm, I'm seeking your testimony uh, concerns a, a very troubling uh, problem created by the uh, city uh, planning department uh, seeking to limit the hours of operation at the subject site. Uh, are any of your uh, 225 uh, 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 operators uh, limited uh, in the number of hours of operation? To our knowledge, no. All our store operators uh, set the hours to the accordance of, of what they believe is best for their clientele, with the majority being 24-hour establishments. Right. Now, uh, if, uh, in your opinion, uh, if the uh, hours of operation at the subject site were uh, limited, cut by a third, uh, what uh, effect would, you, would it have upon the operation, in your opinion? Yes, I mean, of, of course, there's a discussion about from a standpoint of money lost from a, a business standpoint, but for the Community Retail Association, we don't look at it just from the respect of the business losing money. What we look at is 35% of a customer base. These are customers that are going to work, um, customers that are dealing about their everyday business, which is 24 hours. And the idea of stopping hours, let's say from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., that will result in, in many customers now having to travel farther, exhorting more energy, more resources to go to a different store in order to buy their everyday goods. And an establishment like the development of Falcon Fuel, um, they are going to have what we call a large necessity items for their clientele, for neighborhood residents. So yes, if in an event you have an establishment where you have 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. of a closure, that will result in the inconvenience of a lot of customers who will now have to go somewhere else. And by the way, I wanna add, John, this is not just a problem regarding this issue and this gas station. Uh, already the city of Chicago and underserved neighborhoods, uh, there's a huge food desert from one neighborhood to the next, from one store to the next. So uh, an establishment like Falcon Fuel on 127th and Halstead would only serve customers and create a more convenient environment for them to have access to everyday necessities. Fine. I, I have no further questions of uh, Mr. Darwish, if the board does. Um, I want to just open up questions um, to the board for the applicant before we uh, 
we A, go to Nancy Radzovich to talk about the DPD recommendation. B, I want to uh, talk to Alder person Austin um, about whether she's in, in, in support or objection or wants to state otherwise, and then turning to the objectors. So any questions from the board at this time? Okay, um, so Nancy, are you still on? I am. Okay, thank you. Can you, since we're now in regular call, can you state um, your name and who you are and I'll swear you in? Absolutely, I'm Nancy Brazovich. I'm an assistant commissioner with the Department of Planning and Development in the Zoning Bureau. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. I would ask that uh, she speak louder. Uh, they're not coming through very clearly. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and Nancy, I just wanted to um, uh, call you and get your, your take overall on the department's recommendation as it relates to ours. I know that's a lot of what we've discussed about so far, and, and, and that's, that's a lot of what I have questions on. So if you could give a bit of the rationale. Sure. Um, specifically, what we were, what we always do um, when we write recommendations to the board is we review these projects based on the special use criteria. And I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Uh, Councilor, just I can hear Nancy pretty well. Oh. Um, so let's see if it's something related to your speakers. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. Okay. And Nancy, thank you. I can hear you, but for, you know, okay. as loud as you want to speak would be helpful. Okay. Um, so specifically the criteria is the one that says is compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of operating characteristics, such as hours of operation. Um, so what we did is we looked at um, this area and when we look at the area, we really focus on the immediate area, the immediate surrounding area you know, the two or three blocks immediately surrounding the site. Um, one of the biggest uses is a cemetery, which, you know, obviously doesn't have any sort of evening operations. The other principal uses, even though this is a commercial corridor, um, are smaller businesses. They're just local businesses. Um, and most of the hours generally are um, that they, they close at, you know, some of them close at five or 6 p.m. There's a, I think a dollar general that closes at 10 p.m. Um, there's church, there's a, uh, there's a couple of um, automotive type stores um, that have pretty early hours. And our research actually indicated that Harold's Chicken closed at 11 p.m. So um, that's, what, that's what we had found. And then when you look at also the whole makeup of that stretch of Halstead, it is very, very low intensity commercial uses. There aren't any significant um, big automotive generators. There's not a lot of um, late night um, uh, businesses there. They're, they're really smaller commercial businesses. And then the predominant use is obviously to the east and, and to the west when you get off of Halstead are, are predominantly residential. Um, so what we did is, again, our recommendation is just based on specifically the criteria, what is the, the character of the, the area, and, and that's where we based that. Am I correct that 10 p.m. is, is fairly early for when compared to other gas stations in the city? Um, you know, again, we what we look at when we do these special uses is we look at each individual site which is what we're required to do. So what we did is we looked at the context of the neighborhood of these businesses um, and looked at the context of this community and um, DPD felt that 10 p.m. was more reflective of the character of the neighborhood. Okay, questions from the board for, um, for Nancy. I just had one question. This is Faisalli. Um, quick question is, how did you arrive at 10 p.m. versus, say, 11, 12, 1, 2? How, how did you arrive specifically at 10 p.m.? Yeah, what we looked at is, again, we looked at the bulk of the businesses. So there's, there's a couple of automotive stores. Those closed at 5 or 6 p.m. 
we found the dollar closed at 9 p.m. Um, again, there's that predominant land use right across the street um, and to the, to the north. Um, that's a cemetery. You know, there's, there's a lot of um, inactive uses. So what we did is we gauged um, the general hours and then we, we kind of, you know, went a little bit higher than, than the general average. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Okay. Thank you, Nancy. This is Commissioner Esposito. I do just yeah, not to maybe ask to repeat. Um, did the planning department consider the hours of nearby gas stations and a comparison? Um, we did not. Again, what the criteria for the special use is specifically how does this particular business fit in with the character of this surrounding area in terms of operations, including hours of operations? So that is the criteria, and that's what we looked at to evaluate this. So is there anyone who can respond to a question such as, what are the hours of the closest gas stations? Yeah, Joe, um, I, I think that question could be best directed to Joe Ryan. Or, or Mr. Uh, the uh, uh, land planning expert uh, who wrote an opinion letter as to uh, the uh, both the criteria and uh, to the uh, uses of 10 other stations. Right. So again, this is Commissioner Esposito. How close would some of those 10 other stations be to this one? Bill, are you available? Yes, I, I, I am available. So um, uh, in my um, report, um, uh, you know, these 10 other stations, so there's one at uh, a, a BP at 150 West 127th Street, um, uh, which is, I believe would be about a mile uh, to the east. Um, uh, there is um, uh, 12304 South Halstead, uh, about a half a mile to the north, uh, 11501 uh, South Halstead, a little further uh, north, um, probably about a mile. There's um, 19, sorry, there's 99, uh, 100 South Halstead. So um, there are many, um, um, uh, 24 hour gas stations, you know, in, in, in the immediate area. And if I could just comment here, if, if the criteria on hours of operation would be that, uh, you know, the, 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 the subject use has to have hours of operation comparable to the other businesses in the area, you'd have no 24 hour gas stations because there's hardly any 24 hour uses other than, you know, very specific types of uses like gas stations. So um in that respect i think it'd be very a very difficult um uh, criteria to uh to uh to meet if it's applied to all gas stations i i would love to hear joe ryan's take on this um well within a mile west of the property <clears throat> again towards uh, uh the i-57 and 127 interchange there are five gas stations open 24 hours a day, less than a mile from the subject property. That's helpful, thank you. But, but now those are more uh, uh, aren't as convenient for the uh, population. <clears throat> you know, there's, 18,000 people within one mile of the subject property population wise and 142,000 within a uh, three mile radius of the subject property. Commissioner Esposito, is that, um, do you have any follow-ups? Is that sufficient for you? Yes, thank you. Great. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board or else I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the elder person to speak.
Okay, Alderwoman Austin, do we still have you? Yes, sir. Okay, um, I just thought this would be a good time to call you um, for you to state either a support or objection or other thoughts. I am in 100% support of this location. Uh, out of all the information- Oh, sorry, that... sorry ma'am, to interrupt you. I apologize. I do need to swear you in, and I always forget oh, that. Oh, I'm all, sorry. I forget yes. with all the people. So um, will you state your name and who you are? Carrie M. Austin, Alderman, 34th Ward. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Okay, go right ahead, ahead ma'am. Uh, as I was saying, I'm 100% in support of this project. Uh, as Mr. James and uh, Mr. Ryan have spoke uh, in regards to this project, and Mr. Pekarski have asked, in my opinion, quite a few questions that would cover the entire area. Now, uh, I've been alderman for the last 30 years. My husband was the alderman for seven of those. And in the time of this particular location that we have been in this area, there has been such a lack of activities down on this end or any type of business, except for the ones that are in existence now. When uh, Mr. Muhammad came in with the idea of uh, erecting this new facility, my first thought was, as he has stated, a food desert, because on this end, the only people that we have as to distribute any type of food is Dollar General. So this was a, a, a win-win for me uh, in our <coughs> community. It wasn't going to be an impact. And I know one of the uh, speakers have said about uh, Harold's on one side of the street. Um, and they do close at 12. Yeah. Uh, then the uh, cemetery, they close at five. So on those ends, those are specific businesses that have chose those times to close. As far as the other automotive stores that are on those ends, they chose those hours to close, which has been in compliance for the last 30 years that I know of, especially Red's uh, checkpoint. Uh, I have worked with Mr. James for the last 25 years in regards to improving South Halston from 129th to 99th. Now we go to 97. And of all the locations that they have spoken of, the majority of those locations are 24 hour gas stations. We've only had a few incidents at some of them, but for the most part, we've not really had any, any incidents that would you know, spur any uh, uh, police activity. But on this end, it has been a very lack of activity. So I believe that it would be a benefit uh, if this has been approved, if this is approved. Thank you so very much, Mr. Chairman. I want to also say to you, Mr. Chairman, uh, happy anniversary to your grandparents and happy birthday. Uh, but for the speech that you gave in regards to MLK really did touch my heart. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Alderwoman, for, for all of those words. Um, and um, we appreciate you coming. I do have a quick follow-up, just clarification. I just want to make clear on the record, you disagree with the Department of Planning and Development's recommendation that this would close at 10 p.m. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Because it's going to be a food mart as well. Okay. Okay. Any questions from the board um, for Alderwoman Austin? Okay. Again, thank you so much, Alderwoman. Thank for, you. For me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Councilor, at this point in time, I want to move over to the objectors. Um, just keeping with our process. So with that, I know there are several several signed up and I have several on the roster. Um, is there one, and, and you can just unmute and speak, that will be leading things off? Um, just raise my hand. 
Yeah, Miss Kane, are you still on? Yes, I'm on. Great. Um, do you, would you like to speak first? Sure. Um, okay, let me just swear you in really quick. Um, can you state your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Annette Kane. I live at 727 West Vermont, Chicago, 60628. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Okay, thank you. And just as a quick reminder, um, you're able to state your objection and also you're able to ask any questions of the applicant if you have any. Okay, thank you. Yep, go right ahead. Okay, first, uh, I'm trying to understand why is it that Muhammad Adu do not own the gas station and he's able to put in an application for uh, the gas station and he does not even own it. Yep, and so I, I think he... So I was just gonna say, I'll let the applicant um, take, take this. It's a legal formality. So John, you can go right ahead. Yes. Uh, uh, as, far as, as far as I'm concerned, the applicant is a contract purchaser of the property uh, and has the feel, full approval of the uh, contract seller uh, to uh, seek the uh, special use and variation sought. Okay, on the letter that was sent to the residents, it states a legal title to the property is held by the applicant, Muhammad Adu, of 12701 South Halstead, Bridgeview, Illinois. And yes. that's on the bottom. That has been um, amended. It's, it's been amended. To but we haven't received anything. Uh, and and uh, secondly, I, I talk about relevance. Uh, uh, John, I think it's relevant. We can, we can explain and make sure everyone's on the same page. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. And the, the second thing is that uh, um, I don't think that he should be able to put in an application. I know he shouldn't by the ordinance that he shouldn't be able to put in an application with unless he owns the property. And also they continue to say that the uh, property at 12701 is abandoned. The property is not abandoned. It is, it is being ran by a muffler shop. That's, that's one of the second things. And also with Harold's Chicken, Harold's Chicken, they stated, uh, I would say the attorney stated numerous of times that it operates 24 hours a day, which it closed at 11 o'clock on the weekdays and 12 on Saturdays. And also uh, we have about 10 gas stations within a mile in our community, within a mile. Now, we feel, our community feel, that gas, this gas station being put in our community will only draw bad elements to our community. We just had last year, a young girl got shot and killed uh, with a carjacking, a gas stations within a half a mile. All of the gas stations that opens up 24 hours a day and that mile has had a lot of uh, problems regarding criminal activity that goes on in those uh, gas stations. Now, um, and the criminal activity is like the carjackings, is uptick in carjackings in the gas yeah, stations, robberies. Testimony Excuse me, I'm talking. Excuse me, I'm talking. Um, robberies, these gas stations will be in our backyard. We're pretty quiet on this end and we want to keep it that way. Yeah, ma'am, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut in because counselor did object. When, when, when you speak about specific events, we, we just need some, some facts um, as to, you know, what happened, dates, et cetera, for it to be um, in any way applicable to, to our review. Okay, well, I don't have any dates right now, but and in the future, if we have to continue this, I will get those dates. And also, 
Mr. Abdul, I, if I'm not mistaken, he owns a gas station on 103rd, I believe, in Wentworth. This gas station, the crime stats from that gas station states that uh, the gas station is a hub for criminal activity. And I know that the residents in the area, because I spoke to them, stated that they want that gas the station shut down. Specificity. Okay. Um, I, you know, I would like to just reverse that um, as a question on the applicant. So, Mr. Mr. Abdullah, um, can you discuss this, your property on, on Wentworth? No, I do not own this property on 103rd and Wentworth. Okay. I, I'm not really connected with it at all. We don't even supply it as a supplier. We don't have any relationship with that property. Okay. You don't okay. have any relationship? Okay, well, uh, Alderman Austin stated that the first hearing that she came on, she stated that he owns a gas station there. You look back on your records. Uh, okay. we've, got, we've got the applicant on the record, though, noting that he doesn't own or is not associated with that property mentioned. And also, I spoke to the commander. The commander said he could not approve of anything regarding the businesses. So for them to say that he approved of that, I, I don't know where they got that from. I don't know what's going on with that. Can you specify a little bit on that? I'm not, um, uh, I'm not sure what you mean by the commander and the business. So can you, can you go a little bit more in depth on that? Well, I had asked the commander, did he approve of the gas station on 127, of, of this gas station being built on 127? He stated to me that he can't approve of anything. You know, so that tells me that he did not approve of it. Uh, who, who is the commander? Commander Glenn White. Okay. And for all of the security um, that they say they are put up, that's not going to help us in our community when criminal activity come. They care; these people care nothing about cameras and and security guard. Um, also, um, the um, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous here, but I get through this. No, you're fine, ma'am. Um, I just I, I just want to state that. Um, the objections that really um, are, are things that the board can take into consideration when we have conversation on the topic relate to our criteria for, um, for special use. So um, it, it, we can't really weigh anything that is, is what I'll, I'll call, I'm not a litigator, but I'll call hearsay, what someone else has said. It's got to be substantive objections to what they're applying for. Okay. Okay, well, it was 11 year old, like I said, they got shot and killed at the gas station a half a mile away. And uh, they have mentioned numerous of times, I don't know if I said this already. Uh, there's nothing in this area right here in, in our little area that stays open 24 hours. First they said they was on close at 10, then I keep hearing 24 hours, 24 hours. So either you're going to close at 10 or you're going to be open 24 hours a day. And, and just to clarify, that is part of what we are um, e evaluating in this, this hearing right now. What happened was the applicant would like to be open 24 hours. The, the city of Chicago's Department of Planning and Development made a recommendation that it closes at 10. Um, so it's part of the discussion right now, but I, the applicant's point of view is they would like to be open 24 hours. But it's nothing in this community, I, I'm just saying that stays open 24 hours a day. They have their times wrong. Uh, the, the, uh, the property is not vacant. It has not been vacant for, I say, at least the last 15, 20 years. Okay. So I don't know where they get the now, vacancy from. On that note, I actually, that's um, the, the interesting point to me. Um, I don't know if, if Joe Ryan would be the best to address this, but can you address the, um, the statement that there's some sort of muffler shop on the property? Um, it, it, there's a signage for a muffler shop. Um, uh, the three times I was by that location, I never saw any activity in the muffler shop. Uh, 
as, as far as cars coming in and out. Uh, and as you see, the gates were closed all three times I was there. Um, <clears throat> so if, if there is a business there, it, it's not very active. Okay, that, that's helpful. I, I do want us to be careful around any wording then related to abandoned, because I think there's a lack of clarity on the whether it's actually an abandoned property. Okay, well, the pro property is not abandoned. And, uh, and I'm quite sure I have other neighbors that's on also that would contest to that. Uh, also, the Dollar General closed at nine o'clock. Harold's Chicken closed at 11, like I said, I'm repeating myself, but forgive me, 11 o'clock. And we do not need a hub in our community for criminal activity. We need nothing that's gonna stay open 24 hours. We have spoke to Kerry Austin, Alderman Kerry Austin office before. We asked that we have nothing else coming to our community that has to do with cars. We are in a food desert. This gas station is not gonna give us no fresh fruit, fresh fruits and fresh vegetables that the community need. And most of the, probably the um, people that were patronized this gas station uh, were probably the younger people, which would cause probably more of uh, problems in our community. Yep. So this, these are just some of the reasons. And I, I really want to know how was he able to get an application in and he does not own the property. So, and, and thank you for your objections. That point is actually something that has, uh, is just an administrative point that to us, we're okay with legally. Basically the property owner gives consent to um, uh, someone to, to come represented. And, and that's Mr. Abdullah. And I, I know the amendment changed who the property owner was, but um, uh, your other substantive points, we will we'll definitely take under consideration. Um, I'd like to call other community objectors on and, and just remind that um, in the goal of us getting our, meet, our meeting done today, we can't have repetition on issues. So if you have something new to say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna promote someone who is titled Zoom user, um, just to make sure they get a chance to speak if they're here to object. Chairman, would be safer? I just allowed them to talk because we don't know their name. Okay, great. So you have um, permission to talk and you can either just say you agree with the, the past objection or you can give the objection, but go right ahead. Um, and I'll get you sworn in. Please just state your name. Okay, so is uh, can the person titled Zoom user unmute themselves? Okay. Good morning. There we go. Okay. Who's speaking, please? Good morning. My name is Sharon Evans. Thank you, Ms. Evans. Um, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay. So um, just to confirm, you're here to object, correct? Correct. Okay, good. So to get your objection on, we'll just need your address as well. Could you please provide it? Okay, I stay at 12650 South Emerald Avenue, Chicago 60628. Great, perfect. Um, and you are sworn in, so um, go right ahead, ma'am. Good morning, thank you. Thank you all. I would like to object to this situation due to the fact that you all say that the community um, is dry as far as not having um, a grocery store. Gas stations does not um, provide substance grocery stores. I'm concerned about the housing that's located directly on Emerald Avenue. They never address the, uh, the residents that lives right here on Emerald. Um, gas stations does not provide what we need. If, if residents doesn't have their uh, groceries by 10 o'clock, they're definitely not going out at midnight, one, two in the morning to get groceries. Amen. Um, it's elderly people lives right behind there. What, what about the concern about the residents housing that's so close to, to the gas station? If they come out to empty their garbage, they can step three or four feet and they right over into the gas station. Um, 
these young girls are being abducted at gas stations. Sex trafficking goes on at gas stations. And that's a new subject. And you all always talk about money coming into the community. You all don't use the money uh, to, uh, that comes in the community, lottery money, none of the other money goes into the community. And a lot of these people that come in here and open these gas stations, they, don't, they, they lock up and go home. They don't give back to the communities. If kids are selling taffy apples for school or, or, or any type of things being sold by children go to those gas stations for them to patronize them. They don't give back to the community. Okay, ma'am. We have gonna... a lot of we have a lot of elderly people over here. It's not safe for them to go in and out of their garages. That's okay. a new concern. Going yeah. in and out of their garages. I'm gonna interrupt you for a second because I everything you're saying, of course, is a, a valid concern. I just want to uh, state that our jurisdiction here, we're the zoning board of appeals. Um, so I know you're saying a lot of uh, you focused statements. We weigh our analysis on giving um, uh, or granting special use permits related to pretty succinct criteria. So I think the criteria- I understand criteria, but you all should really reach out to residents in the neighborhood and not go on what, what an alderman in, in the ward says that don't even reach out to her uh, residents in her area. Yep, and just and for she's the record, talking about she's a hundred percent in 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 in, in for, for it to go up. I'm not a hundred percent for it to go up, and I live closer to it than she does. Yep, ma'am, and just for I, I just want this on the record: we, um, as a board, the ZBA cannot do independent research. We cannot go into the community, so we rely a lot of, upon the findings of fact that are granted to us and objectors like yourself coming in front of us today. I, I, I want to, I, I was about to just direct you into our criteria. I think the one that you are addressing is um, that you think this special use would have an adverse impact on the general welfare of the community. Is that the absolutely, argument? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. okay. absolutely, absolutely. And okay. the reason why I brought up the other things about the concerns in the community, because the guy that said he went by there and never saw the muffler shop in use, who knows what time he went by there? Yep. It doesn't say, doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't exist. And we do not need a gas station over here 24 hours a day. He should have a, a respectable time to be in the community if he was to come upon the community. It doesn't take 24 hours. And then they go into stores and mark, get stuff and put on the shelf and mark it up too high for people to, uh, to buy. And another thing, he said 2% tax on, uh, on food and they be, they be putting 11% tax on potato chips and different stuff that people buy at those stores. Yep. Okay. Um, thank you, ma'am. And we'll, thank you. Thank yeah, thank you. You. we'll take this under consideration when we go uh, deliberate as a board. So um, do we have another objector on? I'm looking down the list. Um, Peggy, my name is Peggy Pointer. Thank you, Ms. Pointer. And will you state your address as well, please? 12819 South Union Avenue, Chicago. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Okay, go right ahead. Uh, one of the great concerns I have is that this probably doesn't have anything to do with the board either, but I actually uh, report to Alderman Bill because I live on Union and one side, the east side of the street is Carrie Alston and the west side of Union is um, Alderman Bill. And I heard Carrie, uh, well, Alderman Carrie mentioned that this area has always lacked activity in the area. And, and it's, it's true. It's because she or either all the bill have never made an effort to bring businesses down on this end. Whereas on the area uh, where she's located, the businesses are booming. And my main concern is I have this citizen app that I listen to daily and at night. And so far, we are like a cul-de-sac. We are right here at 127, but when I listen at this citizen app at night, all I hear is crime being reported to the police department, robberies, people drawing knives on someone, shootings. And it has come so close 
to our area, we are right at 127. So far, the crime, bad crime element has and not reached this just, area. My so my concern is if we open up, uh, if you are uh, opposed just to, to this. Just to, just to butt in because counselor objected. Um, Ma'am, I, 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 I want you to continue. I just want um, it to be focused within within the criteria that you think it will have a significant yeah, but well, that's why I'm talking about that. That's the very reason why I brought up this um, okay. citizen app. If we allow this service station to open in our area, I strongly believe that the crime rate will increase in this area because it is a hub for crime. And I strongly oppose to it. Now, I understand he wants, he has $2 million that he wants to invest in the community. But my question is, if you want to invest and help this black community, why didn't you open up a big grocery store? That would serve our needs more so than a gas station. And a convenience store, no, I would never, I would never ever buy anything from a convenience store because as the lady stated before me, they increased the prices. So no, I'm I strongly opposed to it. Thank you very much, ma'am, for coming today. You're um, welcome. We'll take this under consideration as well. Um, I believe that we've spoken to, um, to all of the objectors, but please unmute yourself if I'm wrong. And again, um, you can either state your objection or just state that you agree with what the other objectors have said. I agree. Okay, who's speaking just so we can have it on the record? This is Lisa Young. I'm in the 34th Ward office, uh, I'm in Ward. I'm at 12818 South Union Avenue. And Thank I am you. opposed to having this Thank gas station. Thank you. And really quick, just so we can include it, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Okay, great. And now you can, now if you could just state your, your opposition, even if it's just that you oppose, just so that we can have it validly on the record. Okay. I'm opposed to this gas station being zoned at 12701 South Hostin Street. And the reason why is all the points that Anna, Nett, Kang, and Peggy Porn and the rest of them have already stated. This is nothing but another hub for some criminal activity in which we don't need. It's not even necessary. We don't need a gas station here. There is at least eight gas stations within a mile radius. So we don't lack gas over here. We do lack a grocery store, however. If something that needs to be zoned in is a full productive grocery store. And that's it. Thank I you, thank you so much. Yep, thank you, ma'am. Thanks for spending your time today and we'll take this under consideration. Um, any other objectors I'm missing? And um, uh, again, just because we need to continue with our day, um, only new objections. Um, but is anyone else on? Okay. So, Hello, can I say something again? Um, um, so Ms. Kane, Ms. Um, Kane. Yeah, Ms. Kane, we, um, we have given you ample time. So unless there's something brand new that hasn't been touched. Yes, upon, it's something brand new. We've got to continue with our day. Okay, so I'm going to give you. Yes, it's something minutes. brand new I forgot to say. Okay, go I right had submitted you a written protest. Yep. I submitted the, uh, you guys, the zoning board, a written protest from the community. So uh, I'm quite sure you should have it. I submitted it uh, on before November the 19th. Yep. So you all should have the written protest yep, we regarding do. that we are opposed to the gas station. Pardon me? Yep, yep we do. Um, you sent it on uh, May, I see May 7th, 2021. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, thank you. All right. We're going to move back to the applicant and the applicant is able to give rebuttal testimony and the board can ask questions um, and then the applicant will close out. I'd like to make this quick because I, we do have a lot of information on this one. But with that, John, um, take it away. I, I will try to be brief. However, th this is a, a, a pivotally, pivotally important question. Uh, the property in question is located on a principal arterial 
and a minor arterial street. This is not a quiet side street, uh, nor is it a residential district. You know, granted, there is a cemetery uh, located kitty corner from the subject site, but th there clearly is no objection uh, from uh, the uh, residents of the cemetery. Uh, the property is derelict. It is uh, in sad shape. It is not, and there's direct testimony from uh, both the land planning witness and the appraisal <coughs> witness as to the negative impact of the current use of the property. Uh, the uh, fact is that this is nothing that adds to the quality of the community. Uh, I would uh, suggest that the uh, improvement of uh, almost $4 million uh, is, is something that should be welcomed, uh, especially since it's located on two arterial streets. The uh, question as to the uh, discussions with the uh, police uh, commander. Yes, the police commander cannot make a recommendation, but the police commander has indicated in several conversations with my client that he's quite pleased with the fact that we have cameras that are directly linked to the uh, police uh, command, uh, police station, uh, that we will have armed uh, security on the subject site 24 hours a day. Uh, and and uh, this, is, this is something that is, is uh, uh, totally uh, contrary to uh, some of the testimony uh, that has been elicited. Uh, the uh, final thing that, that I would like to say is that we are prepared to uh, create revenue uh, in the amount of approximately $4 million per year at the subject site. In addition to sales tax, gasoline tax, and real estate tax, uh, we are providing to the community uh, a bright new concept that is providing food and uh, gasoline to the site, uh, which clearly does not have uh, anything near, uh, 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 anything comparable near this site. Uh, unfortunately, uh, for uh, some reason, uh, without uh, on-site inspection, by the way, the planning department has uh, issued an opinion um, that uh, it should be closed. Well, this is uh, borders on uh, impossible uh, and will be uh, a, a totally uh, detrimental uh, and uh, will cause this uh, project to be scrapped. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Chair, this is um, alternate board member Vaishali Rao. Sorry for the quality of my camera, not sure. Um, I was just wondering whether the department or anyone else has further testimony on whether the property, whether the lot right now is vacant. Um, I do understand the prior testimony, but it, there does seem to still be a factual issue as to whether there's activity and a, and a um, business that's currently operating there or whether in fact the property is vacant, which seems to be pretty significant. So I'm wondering if there's another witness that can testify as to what's happening there. Yeah, maybe, um, uh, let's see if Nancy Radzovich is on just in case. Um, Nancy, are you still on? I am. And I don't um, know if this would, would be something that you came across, but, but just, it doesn't seem like, um, it seems like the applicants told us what they know about it, but I'm um, just looking for some more. Understood. Um, yeah. 
again, based on our research, um, we we found that it was a, a muffler shop. We did not find that it was um, abandoned. Um, and just, you know, for what it is, anecdotally, I, I just Googled the site in the business right now and it says it's open and closes at 6 p.m. So yep. we didn't we didn't find any indication that it's been closed. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think for our purposes of conversation, we yeah. don't really, Understood. Uh, nothing that has been brought up about it being abandoned is, is um, correct. So I want to um, ask Mr. Abdullah to address that as well. Uh, Mohammed, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Yes. Uh, can you repeat your question, Chairman? Um, so, um, so we've got a good amount. We've got a good amount. And and if you're listening on the live stream, please turn it off because I think I'm uh, hearing feedback. But we had heard from from the applicant side of things that this was an abandoned property. Um, everything we see shows that it's not. So I just want you to address that. Yeah, I do not. As you know, I do not own the property. Uh, now it's um, there's a contract in it. I, I'm not sure if it's abandoned or uh, occupied, but uh, uh, at one point uh, I went there and I saw the place is open for business. Okay, but I'm um, not sure exactly the hour of operations uh, and if it's consistent like opening uh, 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 during the day. Okay. Okay, Commissioner Rao, I know maybe didn't get the whole answer we thought, but do you have any follow-ups on that? I think that's sufficient, thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the commissioners? Um, Mr. Chairman? Yep. I just called the phone number, they are open till 6 p.m. Okay, good, so sorted. Um, we won't um, consider any testimony related to it being abandoned. Okay, I am hearing no additional questions. We've got a lot of information on this. Um, I wanna thank everyone for their time and we'll take this under consideration. With that, I'm gonna call a um, 15 minute recess. That brings us back at 11.55 AM. Um, and I know the first one of the day took a while. I think with the next few pages, we have the capacity to move um, quite quickly. So Commissioner Toya seconds on the recess. Commissioner Saul? Yes. Commissioner Rao? Yes. Commissioner Esposito? Yes. Commissioner Toya? Yes. I vote yes. I'll see everyone back here at 11.55 a.m. Thank you.
Hey everyone, let's give it just one minute. We've got a, a commissioner that had to restart their computer, so I'm gonna get them promoted. Okay, I see everyone on. So I move that we reconvene this uh, January 21st, 2022 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Commissioner Toya seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Commissioner Rao. Muted. Yep, uh, let's see. Commissioner Rao, are you, uh, are you on? Sorry, I, it might be my my audio. Let's make sure your audio works. Commissioner Rao, are you are you on? Yeah. It doesn't look like your audio is working. Um, give us a thumbs up, and we've got quorum anyway. And uh, so so long as the other vote in. Um, but just so you know, we we can't hear you. Um, Commissioner Esposito. Yes. And Commissioner Toya. Yes. Great. I vote yes, and we are back. Um, so we're now going to move into uh, regular call. First up, we're going to call calendar number 1-22-S, our first official matter of the year. Um, with that, the Department of Planning and Development will read the recommendation for this matter because um, it's a pro se applicant. And Nancy, are you on and able to read this recommendation? I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, I had that as uh, not a pro se. Oh. Hmm. Chairman, I believe Joe Ryan is her expert. Ah, got it. There's an expert on this one. There's no attorney. Okay, that makes sense. Sorry about that. No so problem. for calendar number 1-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair salon slash barbershop. Do we have um, Christina Collins on? Yes. Hi, Ms. Collins. Will you state your name and address, please? Um, my name is Christina Collins, and the address is 3035 West Fullerton Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. Thank you. And you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so what brings you here today? Um, I am proposing to open up a hair salon in the Logan Square neighborhood. I have been in the industry since 2009, and I've been a part of Chicago's uh, barbershop and salon industry since 2013. I personally have always lived in the Logan Square neighborhood. So for me, it's an honor um, to be a part of this neighborhood as I'm really passionate about it. Uh, Fullerton Avenue brings a lot of memories for me. Um, this salon is also going to be a place to host independent artists, as well as I have a large community of stylists from all over the country. So I'm hoping in the future, especially after, you know, COVID is to really just bring a lot of people from all over the country and the world here to Chicago to experience the Logan Square neighborhood and kind of come together as hairstylists and barbers and all other artists. That's great. Thank you. And um, so do you intend to employ um, stylists? Um, no, I will actually have renters. Okay. 
So they'll run their businesses um, within my business. So how many renters um, do you, can you explain uh, how many renters you anticipate? Um, right now I have a max of five chairs open um, for, so I'll have a max capacity five renters. Um, but for now I'll keep it at four just because COVID. <laughs> yep. Perfect. Um, okay. Um, we're going to get Joe Ryan on as well, but any questions from the board at this point? No. Um, Joe, are you still on? I am chairman. Great. Okay. So you're sworn in and we've acknowledged your expertise. Thank um, you. So go right ahead on this one. Uh, I went to the subject property. Uh, I examined it for all the criteria that this board needs uh, to grant a special use for a hair salon. Uh, I examined each of the criteria in my report, reported what I found and found that this did meet all of the criteria for the board to grant a special use for a hair salon at this location. Thank you, Joe. Um, any questions from the board for either the applicant or for Mr. Ryan? Okay, we've got what we need here. So thank you very much, Ms. Collins, and we'll take this under consideration. Thank you. Yep, enjoy your weekend. You too. All right, let's go to calendar number two, dash two, dash S. And this is at 3304 West Fullerton Avenue. And this one is, um, is pro se without an expert. Uh, so Nancy, I won't steal your thunder. So if you could go ahead and read this one. Thank you. Um, the Department of Planning and Development rec recommends approval of the proposed nail salon. The department finds the proposal complies with all applicable standards of the zoning ordinance, is in the interest of public convenience, and will not have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood. The department also finds the nail salon will be compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of building scale and design and operating characteristics. Lastly, the proposed nail salon is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort. Thank you very much. Um, so do we have, I believe the main applicant is Sarah Zabadne. Yes, I'm here. Sarah, can you say your name and address, please? My name is Sarah Zabadne. The address is 3304 West Fullerton Avenue, Chicago, Illinois, 60647. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. So um, tell us a little bit about what brings you here and what you're looking to do. So I'm applying for a special use permit to open the nail salon in Logan Square. Um, I've been in the industry for about four years now. Uh, the business was previously located in the Humboldt Park neighborhood, and I also had to go through this um, zoning process. Um, but unfortunately, due to COVID, the business didn't survive in Humboldt Park. Um, I had to shut down. I couldn't keep up with the rent when business declined. And now I'm just hoping to start fresh in Logan Square and um, open up a nail salon. I'm, and also I'm a licensed uh, nail technician in the state of Illinois. Great. Any questions from the board? And um, Ms. Zabadne, I see that you have some, some witnesses on. So if you want to get them on as well, we can, we can do that now. They were here in the very beginning when this started but it kind of took a while until it was my turn and they all had to to do their own thing so unfortunately they are no longer here we sometimes lose some people we try our best yeah it's um, i'm hoping it <laughs> suffice yeah um questions from the board though for mrs for mrs zabadne okay we have what we need on this one. So thanks so much for your time and we'll take it under consideration. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. You too. Bye. All right, let's go to calendar number 3-22-S. And this is at um, uh, 1879 North Milwaukee Avenue. Um, so uh, Nancy, whenever you're ready, if you could read the recommendation. Absolutely. 
The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair salon. The department finds that this proposal complies with all applicable standards of the zoning ordinance, is in the interest of public convenience, and will not have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood. The department also finds the hair salon will be compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of building scale and design and operating characteristics. Lastly, the proposed hair salon is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort. Thank you. Um, and do we have Ms. Susan Sterba on? I am on, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Ms. Sterba, can you state your name and address, please? Uh, great, my name is Susan Sterba and uh, my address is 5319 North Paulina Street, 60640. Thank you, and do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do, yes. Thank you, and as an initial um, just clean up, um, uh, I believe our agenda might have your the address of the salon wrong. Um, can that you is, state go the ahead. correct address? So the, the correct address of the salon is 1883 North Milwaukee, 60647. Great. So what we will um, uh, amend the agenda on the record just right now. Um, me saying the correct address um, for calendar number 3-22-S is 1883 North Milwaukee. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, on, to, on to normal business, what brings you here today? Um, well, good afternoon to you and to the panel. My name is, again, Susan Sturba, and I am looking to open up um, uh, my second hair salon in uh, Bucktown. Um, I have an existing salon with 12 current stylists um, in Lincoln Park. And um, fortunately we have survived and thrived um, through COVID. And um, I've been in the industry for almost 25 years. And um, I have always had my eyes set on um, Bucktown Wicker Park. So I am um, hoping to obtain a special use to open up um, a new hair salon there that would have uh, 12 stylists working at that location. Great, so just to confirm, you will be keeping your other locations open as well? That is correct, yes. Great. Questions from the board for Ms. Sturba? Hey, Ms. Sturba, it sounds like we have what we need here. So um, we really thank you for your time and, and showing up and um, we'll take this under consideration. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. You too. Okay. Let's go to calendar number 4-22-S at 1710 West 48th Street. Um, Again, I think the Department of Planning and Development will read the recommendation. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed hair salon. The department finds that this proposal complies with all applicable standards of the zoning ordinance, is in the interest of public convenience, and will not have a significant adverse impact on the general welfare of the neighborhood. The department also finds the hair salon will be compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of building scale and design, and operating characteristics. Lastly, the proposed hair salon is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort. Thank you very much. Um, do we have uh, Ms. Shanae Joseph on? Yes, I'm on. Uh, hi, Ms. Joseph. Yep, we talked to you earlier. Can you, can you state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, um, my name is Shanae Joseph, and um, the address is 1710 West 48th Street. Chicago, Illinois, 60609. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Great. Yes. And as one minor just uh, clarification for us, um, are you the applicant or is your L or is your um, corporation? Uh, um, my corporation is the applicant. Um, I will be purchasing the building and my uh, business plan and leasing it for myself and my other business. Okay, great. Um, so we've got, we've got both on the agenda, but it sounds like the corporation is, uh, is the applicant and uh, Joseph Properties is the owner. Um, okay, yes. so 
What brings you here today, Ms. Joseph? Um, I am here because, um, well, for starters, um, I'm, a, I'm a hairstylist. I've been a hairstylist, graduated from um, Paul Mitchell in about in 2012, and um, I've been practicing in the salon ever since, and even prior, even um, before that. Um, I am from the back of the yard, neighborhood, born and raised. My family on property in that area, um, and um, I love, I love it. I don't plan on. I mean, it's just my it's where I'm from. So um, definitely, I'm just ready to finally give back to my community, and um, um, in a very artistic way, um, by opening the salon, and. Um, and I'm, and I'm here because initially I was um, denied. The, the, I'm here to apply for the special use zoning for the perspective salon. I was initially denied that um, zoning because of the, the competition rule. There was a supposed um, salon that was within a thousand square feet. However, um, I went to, we, we found out that that salon is not open and operating. And then um, I went to a zoning meeting with the 15th Ward um, on December, I mean, November 1st, and um, they approved me. Um, and so now I'm here with you guys. Yeah, that's how, that's how you landed here. That makes sense um, with us. Uh, do you intend to, um, to hire employees at the salon? Uh, yes, I do. I intend to have um, six salaries, uh, myself, um, and pretty much other people from the community. Great. Perfect. Um, any questions from the board for Ms. Joseph? Okay, Ms. Joseph, it sounds like we have everything we need. So we thank you for your time and we'll take this under consideration. Okay, one question. Um, I know you guys have a review period. What is the, the normal time for that? Um, so we, uh, we get through our day and um, by tonight, Immediately after our day, we deliberate and come back and um, uh, and and just give the results of the voting. Um, it's public; you can watch it, um, okay. or it'll it'll be on the website in a matter of days. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Bye. Okay, let's go to calendar number five dash twenty two dash F. We have Councillor Patrick Turner on this one. So I will go ahead and read the department's recommendation. The Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed barbershop slash hair salon. So do we have Patrick Turner? Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Patrick Turner with offices at 33 North LaSalle Street. I represent the applicant Menestes LLC, uh, which is seeking a special use to establish a barbershop uh, that is located within a thousand feet of an existing personal service establishment in a B13 neighborhood shopping district. Um, and, and Patrick, sorry to cut you off. I just want to check really quick. Do you want to take five and six together? Um, that would be great. Okay, so long as you think they're associated. I mean, they're, they're, they're identical, just different addresses, Mr. Chairman. So let me go ahead and read the department's recommendation for six as well. Um, so the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed barber shop slash hair salon. Um, and with that, I see someone's hand raised um, uh, Please only have your hand raised if you're objecting to this matter. I'm going to promote you now to confirm whether that's the case. It's a Galaxy AO2. Uh, Chairman, I, I allowed them to talk so they can unmute and let us know. Okay. So can that Galaxy AO2 please unmute and let us know what they're um, uh, what they'd like to say. And Kamo, from the phones, you remember, is it star nine to unmute? Yes, star nine, but this person is not on phone. Um, the only reason I, I, I don't want to promote them is we don't know their name. It just says Galaxy A02. But yeah, let's let's try to, you know, so that Galaxy A02, if you could please unmute 
we'd just like to figure out if you're here for this matter or a different one. They are receiving a message from me. The host is asking them to unmute, but they're not responding. So I think it probably moved away from their desk. Yeah. So you sent them a, a, a message as well, Kamal? Yes, I, I can, or you can also, when, you, when we say ask to unmute, they get a prompt. Uh, okay, good. I'll keep saying it um, uh, throughout the matter. I want to let the, the counselor get going, but, you know, as always, we are um, trying to go above and beyond to, to make sure everyone can speak. Um, so with that, counselor, go right ahead. Okay, so we'll, we'll take these together. Um, so Menestes LLC is the applicant on both uh, special use applications. The, um, the two addresses are 3235 North Ashland in the Lakeview area, and the other address is 1444 North Wells. Now I was on earlier, Mr. Chairman, when the uh, Alderman Burnett came on. Um, I had met with Alderman Burnett personally. Um, he suggested that we reach out to the uh, chamber the Old Town Merchants and Residents Association, which we did. And uh, the association uh, submitted a letter of support dated December 6th to Alderman Burnett. So for the record, we did meet with the Alderman. He said to reach out. We got the support from the chamber. And as a matter of fact, I'd like to submit that at some point, uh, the letter of support into the record. Um, but in any event, um, Two identical cases. Um, Mr. Edwin Greer is the manager of the LLC um, and purchased the assets of two existing uh, sports clip franchisees, franchises at the same time. So there was a sports clip franchise operating at each of these locations. Menestes LLC purchased them both and they are now required to secure their own uh, special use permit because they're within a thousand feet of another personal service establishment. Um, they, uh, both locations are on ground floor uh, levels. Um, uh, there'll be different managers at each of the locations. Uh, Mr. Greer does not actually uh, work at the locations. He's just the manager or owner, I should say. Uh, so at the uh, Ashland location, Gabby Martinez, who is a licensed cosmetolo cosmetologist will manage that store. And at the Ash, uh, Wells location, Shelby Liedolf will manage that store. Um, we uh, also have uh, engaged Bud Kerwin as our expert. Um, Mr. Mr. Greer is also available to testify. And at this point, I would like to call my first witness, uh, which is Bud Kerwin. Bud, um, I believe you are with us. Yes, I am. Great, but can you state your name, uh, occupation, and address for the record? Uh, yes, it's Sylvester uh, Bud Kerwin Jr. I, my offices are at uh, 7765 West North Avenue in River Forest, Illinois. I'm president and owner of SJ Kerwin and Associates, real estate appraisers and consultants. Great, and you have testified yes. this, uh, before this board on numerous occasions, isn't that correct? Yes, that is correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask that uh, the, the uh, board recognize Bud as a uh, expert witness. Yep, I would like to swear Bud in too. So Bud, can you please uh, 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 state your name and address one more time for the record? Yes, it's uh, Sylvester J. Kerwin Jr. I'm president and owner of SJ Kerwin & Associates, real estate appraisers and consultants. My uh, address is 7765 West North Avenue in River Forest, Illinois. Thank you. And you swear firmly to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. And yes, we recognize your expertise based off many experiences in front of this board. Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. And, Bud, you visited uh, both of these sites and prepared uh, reports regarding your opinions and conclusions for both of these special uses, correct? Yes, that's correct. And you also signed an affidavit summarizing your opinions and conclusions which were also submitted as part of the uh, findings of fact. Is that correct? Yes, that's also correct. And um, your opinions and conclusions conclude that each of these uh, locations um, will comply with all of the criteria of 
under the special use. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And in particular, uh, it is your opinion that the special uses, if granted, will not cause substantial injury to the character, welfare, or values of property in the neighborhoods and are consistent with the stated purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance. Is that correct? Yes, that's uh, also correct. If, if I might point out on both of these uh, locations in my research, the Zoning Board of Appeals approved both of these special uses back in uh, 2013. And so they have been operating for seven years or so and uh, under the same uh, operation, sports clubs. Thank you, Bud. And um, if you were to continue to testify in this matter, it would be consistent with the opinions and conclusions contained in your reports on both of these matters. Is that correct? Yes, that is also correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to walk through the uh, individual criteria if the board thinks it's necessary. Otherwise, I'd open up uh, uh, questions uh, for the board if they have any for Bud. I think, um, uh, I think if we could get Mr. Greer on, would be helpful. Uh, okay. uh, and then we'll circle back on questions for, for both. Edwin, are you with us? Yes, sir. How are you, Edwin? Yes, doing well, thank you. Could you uh, state your name and address for the record? Sure, Edwin Greer, and it's 1444 North Wells Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60610, and then also 3435 North Ashland Avenue. Chicago, Illinois, 60657. Thank you. And, and Mr. Greer, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Edwin, you purchased the assets of uh, both of these existing franchise, uh, sports club franchises, um, which, were, which had been operating since 2013. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And it's not, now you need to obtain your own special use permits to continue operating as sports clips, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, Gabby Martinez will operate the Ashland location and um, Shelby Leadoff will operate the Wells location for you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And they are both licensed cosmetologists. Yes, sir. Okay. And... Um, you also uh, signed an affidavit summarizing your opinions and conclusions on both of these applications. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And if you were con to continue to testify, you would do so in consistent with the facts stated in that those affidavits. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, again, I welcome uh, any questions uh, for either Bud or Mr. Greer by the board. Yeah, Mr. Greer, one that comes to mind is, um, do you envision changing any things in operation significantly with the shift in ownership? Uh, no, sir. It's a franchise, so I'm pretty bound by my franchise agreement to operate uh, just like every other sport clips in the nation. So I, I legally can't change anything. Yep. Okay. Um, other questions from the board for either... Mr. Greer, or Mr. Kerwin. Okay. Sounds like we have what we need. Um, so thank you everyone for your time and we'll take both of these under consideration. Thanks, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. And for the record, I, uh, we also reached out to Alderman Tunney's office on the Ashland location. They didn't have any issues. Okay, noted. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah, and Counselor, I believe we stick with you. That is correct. Um, so I'll call calendar number 7-22-S and read the department's recommendation. For calendar number 7-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed barbershop. Okay, again, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the board, my name again is Patrick Turner. I represent the applicant Blade Work Studio LLC, which is an Illinois limited liability company. They are also seeking a special use to establish a barbershop, which is located within a thousand feet of an existing personal service establishment in a B31 community shopping district. Uh, the applicant is the lessee of the subject property located at 10411 South Ewing Avenue. 
Um, the proposed space is approximately 600 square feet and is located at the ground uh, floor level of a mixed use commercial and residential apartment building. Uh, Alfonso Navarrete is uh, the member and manager of the applicant and is a licensed cosmetologist with experience at other barber shops in the city. Uh, the, the proposed shop will specialize in unique haircutting and styling that are popular with younger customers. Uh, the interior of the space will have three styling stations and a chair, plus one movable chair uh, and a customer service counter. Um, at this point, um, I would like to uh, call our expert witness, uh, Bud Kerwin. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I want to note just again that if, if anyone is here to object on this matter, this matter being 7-22-S, please raise your hand and we'll get you promoted. Um, with that, Bud has been sworn in and um, we have acknowledged his expertise. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. But again, for the record, could you state your name, occupation, and address? Yes, uh, Sylvester J. Kerwin, Jr. I'm president and owner of S.J. Kerwin Associates Real Estate Appraisers and Consultants. My address is uh, 7765 West North Avenue in River Forest, Illinois. Thanks, Bud. And uh, you visited this site and prepared a report regarding your opinions and conclusions for this special use. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you also signed an affidavit summarizing your opinions and conclusions, which was submitted as part of the findings of fact. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And in your, uh, your opinions and conclusions are that this special use and this site comply with all of the special use criteria in the code. Is that correct? Yes, that was my conclusion after making my inspection and research. And in, in particular, you are of the opinion that the special use will not cause substantial injury to the character, welfare, and or value of property in the neighborhood and is consistent with the stated purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Uh, once again, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to walk Bud through the individual criteria if, that, uh, if you think that is needed. Otherwise, I would open up questions uh, by the board. Yeah, no, I think, again, we can do the fast version of criteria. We just, um, uh, of course, would like to get the applicant on. Okay, is Alfonso, are you with us? Yes, good morning. How are you, Alfonso? Good, how are you? Good, I hope you're, hopefully you're staying warm. Yes, really um, cold out here. Could you state your name and uh, address for the record? Uh, my name is Alfonso Navarrete. Uh, address is uh, 9725 South Avenue J. Thank you. And Alfonso, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Alfonso, you are a licensed uh, cosmetologist and have worked at other locations in the city. Is that correct? Correct. And you will manage the store. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, and you will. Uh, you also signed an affidavit summarizing your opinions and conclusions. Uh, is that correct? Correct. And if you were to continue to testify here uh, this afternoon, uh, it would be consistent with the statements contained in your affidavit. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and you heard the testimony previously. Do you agree with all that testimony? Yes, I do. Um, again, at this point, Mr. Chairman, I'd welcome uh, questions by the board for Mr. Navarrete. And thank you, Mr. Navarrete. Um, any questions from the board? Okay, seeing as there are none, we'll take this under consideration. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. And once again, we did reach out to the Alder woman, uh, Alder woman Susan Sadlowski Garza, and do have a letter of support from her. Thank that you. I would be happy to submit as part of the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, enjoy your weekend. You as well. Thank you. Okay, we're now going um, to a special use as well as a variance. Um, calendar numbers 8-22-S and 9-22-Z. So I'll read the department's recommendation for the special use as everyone gets situated. And again, if you're here to object on either of these matters, um, please raise your hand and we'll get you promoted. 
For 8-21-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval to establish residential use below the second floor for a proposed 15 unit, three building townhome development, provided that the development is consistent with the design and layout of the plans and drawings dated January 10th, 2022, prepared by 360 Design Studio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, uh, my name is uh, Patrick Turner. I represent the applicant McBreary Construction Company, uh, which is the owner of the subject property, which is located at 334-38 East Pershing, 3851-57 South Calumet Avenue, and 3844-58 South Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Um, the property is located in a B3-3 community shopping district it comprises 24,624 square feet or approximately 0.57 acres of total land area. Uh, the applicant is seeking a special use to allow the construction of a new 15 residential dwelling unit, three story with basement, three building townhome development with residential uses located in the basement and first stories of each building. Um, I have hopefully uh, with us as my witnesses, uh, Ed McBrearty, who is the president of the applicant, Bud Kerwin, who I uh, know is with us, and Robert Link, who is one of the project designers on the project. Hopefully we have uh, Ed and Bob with us. Yep, I, see, I see Ed signed in. Um, I see someone named uh, Sarah Tyree with their hand raised. So. Um, Sarah, if you could just identify yourself so we can um, sort out what your role is here. Is Eddie Ed McBrearty? Is it is that the same person? I'm Ed guessing McBrady. so. Edward McBrearty. Great. Sarah is, is one of the uh, one of the employees and a, a representative of Ed, but I believe uh, I okay. know we have Bob because I can see Bob with us and yep. uh, and. Um, Hopefully, Ed is also with us. And if not, Sarah may be testifying on the on Ed's behalf. Uh, I am here. Okay, there we Great. go. Perfect. So we have our witnesses. Um, so at this point, I'd like to call as my first witness, um, Bud Kerwin. And um, Bud, uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, you will recognize that Bud's uh, under oath still, correct? Yep, so Bud is both under oath and we've recognized his expertise. Okay. Thank you. Um, Bud, for the record, please state your name, uh, occupation, and address. Uh, Sylvester J. Kerwin, Jr. I'm president and owner of S.J. Kerwin Associates, real estate appraisers and consultants. The address is 7765 West North Avenue in River Forest, Illinois. Okay, Bud, you visited the site and prepared a report regarding your opinions and conclusions for this special use. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And you also signed an affidavit summarizing your opinions and conclusions, which was submitted as part of the findings of fact. Is that correct? Yes, that's also correct. Okay, so um, Bud, let's talk uh, about the uh, approval criteria. Uh, in your opinion, the proposed development and the special use, if granted, will comply with all applicable standards of the zoning ordinance. Is that correct? Yes, that was my conclusions, yes. Okay, in your opinion, the proposed residential townhouse uh, use below the second floor level is in the interest of public convenience for the following reasons. Number one, it is consistent with the existing and more recent redevelopment character and patterns within the immediate neighborhood. Yes. Okay. And secondly, there are residential land uses below the second floor level to the north and south of the subject property, as well as some new ground floor uh, residential development to the east um, along Pershing and within that is no, uh, known as the Oakwood Shores Redevelopment Project. Is that correct? Yes, that's also correct. Yes. They have, they have first floor residential there as well. Yes. Okay. And um, third, uh, the proposed development will complement the adjoining and nearby multi-unit residential developments. Is that correct? Yes, it will. Uh, and lastly, with respect to the, uh, uh, this criteria, 
Um, the proposed development will provide an economic benefit by improving the lake and van vacant land parcel with new townhomes um, that are in market demand. Yes, that's, that's correct also. The subject has been vacant for quite a while. Uh, and briefly, uh, Martin Luther King Drive, part of the boulevard, that has been land uses of residential, many of them below the second floor level. Pershing Road has been more characterized as a commercial land uses, but many of those improvements that were built in the early 1900s have since been taken down and a lot of vacant land. There's been redevelopment in the areas such as the uh, Oakwood Shores redevelopment project. And there's a number of newer uh, residential properties, about three stories, two and a half, with residential uses along the ground floor level to the east of our property. Okay. Um, the, uh, the proposed residential development uh, is compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of site planning and building scale and project design as it has been designed with the attention of attracting similar middle income individuals and family users that already reside in the neighborhood. Is that correct? Yes, that's what I found, yes. And they are desirous of uh, living in the city uh, with these types of amenities and, and size, correct? Yes. Um, continuing on, um, it's your opinion that the proposed special use is compatible with the character of the surrounding area in terms of operating characteristics, such as hours of operation, outdoor lighting, noise and traffic generation, for the following reasons. Number one, it will provide less pedestrian foot and vehicular traffic than a commercial retail occupant and therefore operate during similar hours as other residential properties which have been established in the neighborhood for some time. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct in my opinion. And also um, there are other residential uses uh, with simil similar to the existing um, that, have, that are already in the immediate neighborhood. Is that true? That's correct. As I mentioned, just to the north of us along King Drive as well as along Giles or Calumet, uh, just to the north of us. Okay, and um, the proposed special use in your opinion, Bud, is designed to promote pedestrian safety and comfort for the following reasons. Number one, it will comply with all current residential building codes and standards, correct? Yes. Uh, secondly, the the proposed project is designed to provide an efficient and economical residential use with storage and on-site garage parking. Is that yes. correct? Yes, that's correct also. And lastly, the improvements are similar to existing developments and will not adversely affect light and air to other properties. That's correct. It'll complement character. Okay. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, your research uh, of the immediate area, as well as other similar properties in the neighborhood, did not reveal any adverse impact on surrounding properties. Is that correct? That's correct. I found no evidence of any adversity to that. And uh, it is your opinion that the proposed special use will not cause substantial injury to the character, welfare, or value of property in the neighborhood and is consistent with the stated purpose and intent of the zoning ordinance. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct also. But if you were to continue to testify here this afternoon, would it be consistent with the opinions and conclusions contained in your report and affidavit? Yes, it would be. Um, I have no further questions uh, for uh, Bud. Be welcome. Uh, any questions by the board? Any questions from the board um, for Bud before we get to the other um, the other individuals? I'm sorry, say that again, Mr. Chairman. I was asking if there's any questions from the board. Okay, but we might circle back with some, um, but we can keep going down the list. Yes, sir. Okay, I would like to call as my second witness, uh, Robert Link. Um, Bob, um, can you state your name, uh, occupation and address for the record? Robert Link. Uh, Project designer, 2453 South Archer, Chicago, Illinois, 60616. Thanks, Mr. Lincoln. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. 
Bob, um, you were part of the applicant's development of a condo building uh, located just down the block at 3914-3922 King Drive. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, you, were, you were involved as a project engineer on that project? That's correct. And the buyers in that project wanted something more than a condo and less than a single family home. So a townhome development there was more attractive. Is that fair to say? That's fair to say. That's what we found. And then this development was designed exactly with that in mind uh, and to be compatible with the surrounding area. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, due to this being a townhome or row home development um, that is consuming the entire site, you decided to keep company with the row houses on Calumet and not the tall apartment buildings on King Drive, correct? Correct. Okay, and uh, you determined that a three and a half to four story townhome would not work due to the fact that construction costs for the additional floors and extra stairs and fire sprinklers and other costs would not be captured by the sale prices that buyers are looking for. Is that true? That is correct. So in terms of site planning, you designed the site uh, for each unit to face the street and have indiv individual front entrances and parking off the rear uh, so an, it could not be seen from the street, similar to the townhomes on Calumet. That's true. Uh, in terms of building scale, you matched the scale of the townhomes and, on Calumet that are two and a half stories with basements. Is that correct? That's correct also. And in terms of project design, uh, all townhomes are all masonry with different detailing that makes, makes each one of them look a little different. Is that true? That is true. The townhomes have flat roofs and private front door entrances with iron railings similar to Calumet design concept. Is that oh, true? That is correct. Fits all well within the neighborhood, right, Bob? Yeah. Uh, the choice of using different color masonry, iron railings for stairs, similar brick, Detailing also came from the development that you did for the applicant down the street. Is that correct? That is also correct. Um, I have no further questions uh, for Bob on, uh, on this application and would welcome questions by the board. Okay. Any questions from the board um, at this time before we hear from Ed? All right, Councillor, go right ahead. Okay, um, Ed, could you state your name uh, and address for the record? Uh, Ed McBurdy, McBurdy Construction. Uh, um, my address? Yeah, business address. At 10900 South Hamlin, Chicago, Illinois. Thanks, and uh, um, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay, Mr. McBurdy, you are the president of McBurdy Construction Company, Inc., is that correct? Yes. And you own the subject property? Correct. You heard the uh, testimony of uh, Bud and Bob. Uh, would you agree with all the testimony? Yes. Um, and you also uh, submitted or signed an affidavit summarizing your uh, testimony, which was submitted as part of the findings of fact. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, if you were to continue to testify here this afternoon, uh, it would be consistent with the facts contained in your affidavit. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd welcome questions uh, from the board for Mr. McBurdy or any of the other witnesses at this point. Okay, I've got I've got one that comes to mind, and the um, members of the board may as well. But um, what were your discussions, if any, like with um, Older Woman Dahl leading into um, this plan? Yeah, I presented it to her. And she gave me a letter of approval. Okay. Mr. Chairman, as a matter of fact, um, I would like to submit that as part of the record. We do have a letter of support from Alderwoman Dow um, for the record. Let me make sure we already have it because otherwise it's too late. Um, yeah, too late to submit the letter, but we, we you know, the applicants just told us that he's spoken with the older woman and um, that's helpful. Other questions from the board? Hi, this is uh, Jolene Fall. I have a question about the variation. Can you address 
the hardship um, of the site and then how, how you're specifically addressing that hardship? Yeah, Jolene, I'd be happy. Uh, I was actually just gonna, that was our special use presentation. Oh, sorry, I thought we were doing them together. No, that's okay. Um, I've, uh, are you taking, just to be yeah, clear, so counselor, are you taking them the presentation separately? I am. Okay. Okay. So you know, usually we usually we embed them, but I uh, thought in this, Mr. Chairman, I thought in this case it would be prudent to separate them because um, I thought I thought that would be uh, the better way to to proceed. So I'd be happy to to dive into the variation request at this point. Great. Yep. Okay. Um, again. Um, the applicant uh, seeks a variation to allow a portion of the required 175 square feet of private yard area per unit to be located on balconies that exceed four feet from grade for 10 of the 15 proposed townhome units. Uh, to, once again, to allow the construction of a new three-story with basement, three-building townhome <laughs> with 15 residential units. Um, once again, I have all three of, of the same witnesses with me. Um, they've all been sworn in. Um, and at this point, um, I would like to uh, call uh, Robert Link as my first witness for the special, uh, I'm sorry, for the variation request. So um, Bob, you work with uh, Chris Bohm at 360 Design Studios, correct? Yes, for 15 years. And um, uh, Chris had submitted an affidavit um, in support uh, or, or summarizing his uh, opinions and conclusions and facts, uh, which was submitted as part of the variation application. Is that correct? That is correct. And unfortunately, Chris is having a medical procedure this afternoon and was a, un, unable to attend this hearing. Is that correct? That is correct. But you are familiar with the project. You are you have read Chris's affidavit and your um, uh, testifying here on his behalf, on behalf yes. of the architectural side of things. Correct for both, yes. Okay. Um, you were one of the project designers on this project, correct, Bob? Yes. Um, the proposed development consists of residential units uh, that will include two lower level, partially finished, I'm sorry, will, will include lower level, partially finished basement with two cards two car attached garages plus first and second floor levels for each for each of the units as living areas. Is that correct? That is correct. And the proposed variation we are seeking allows 90 to 95 square foot portions of private yard area to be relocated to a balcony on the same level as the first floor of the main living areas. Is that correct? That is correct. This allows a more desirable, more convenient and safer private yard area. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Okay. Uh, strict compliance with the code creates a practical difficulty as it would not allow the relocation of this safer, more desirable private yard area. Correct. Is that correct? Yes. In fact, uh, the area uh, would be located down a flight of stairs from the main living area and next to uh, streets the streets, in this case, Calumet King and Pershing. That's correct, as you can see on the screen. Um, in addition, uh, strict compliance with the code would result in smaller units by requiring the expanded private yard at grade in front of each units and, and would not allow the property to yield a reasonable return, which we'll go through later with Mr. McBurdy, but that's your, uh, opinion. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, the subject property is an L-shaped corner lot with 140 feet of frontage on King Drive, 206 feet of frontage along Pershing, and 90 feet of frontage along Calumet. Is that correct? Yes. The parcel also has a 16-foot wide public alleyway along the rear portion uh, with access from Calumet. Is that correct? That's correct. As such, it is challenging to design a townhome development on this type of, type of property with the myriad of setback and separation requirements, which altogether are unique and not generally applicable to other, other similarly situated properties. 
Is that your uh, opinion? Yes, it is. Uh, the property is also unique because of the L-shaped configuration and other attri attributes as set forth as we just talked about. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, the purpose of the variation is based upon offering a safer, more secure, and more desirable private yard area located on a balcony off the main living area and not based exclusively on a desire to make more money out of the project. Would you agree with that? That's true. And the difficulty and hardship in this matter relate to a safe and practical design amenity, as well as the economic hardship, and has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. Would you agree with that? Yes. Uh, the proposed development will contribute to the overall economic viability of the neighborhood. Is that true? Yes. Uh, this type of residential use already exists in the immediate neighborhood and would, will therefore fit in well with the surrounding area. Yes. The height of the townhomes will be similar to surrounding buildings and there will be two car garages for each unit, correct? Correct. As such, the variation will not impair an adequate supply of light and air to adjacent properties or inc increase congestion or increase the danger of fire or endanger the, the public safety or substantially diminish property values in the neighborhood. Yeah, that is true. That is a mouthful. Uh, in your <laughs> professional opinion, uh, strict compliance with the regulations and standards of the zoning ordinance would create practical difficulties and hardships for the subject development. Is that correct? Yes. In your professional opinion, these practical difficulties or hardships are due to unique circumstances and are not generally applicable to other similarly situated properties. Yes. In your professional opinion, the purpose of the variation is not based exclusively upon a desire, desire to make more money out of the project. Is that true? That is true. In your professional opinion, the practical difficulty or particular hardship has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. Is that true? Okay. Uh, if the variation was granted, in your professional opinion, it will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property or improvements in the neighborhood. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. In your professional opinion, the proposed variation will not impair an adequate supply of light or air to adjacent property or substantially increase congestion on the public streets. Correct. Uh, and lastly, in your professional opinion, the proposed variation will not increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety. Uh, is that true? That is true. Bob, if you were to continue to testify, would your testimony be consistent with the facts and opinions contained in Chris's affidavit? Yes. And you are, are you have read and are familiar with everything uh, in Chris's affidavit. Is that true? That is true. Um, I have no further questions for Mr. Link and would welcome questions by the board at this point. Any questions from the board? Okay, Councilor, it doesn't sound like any. Okay, at this point, uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to call, uh, recall, I should say, Mr. McBrady. So, okay, go ahead. Ed, could you state your name and address for the record again? Uh, Edward McBurdy, Eddie McBurdy, Ed McBurdy, uh, McBurdy Construction, 10900 South Hamlin, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, Ed, you heard uh, all the testimony from Bob, and would you agree with all of Bob's testimony? Yes. Uh, and again, the proposed variation allows uh, 90 to 95 square foot portions of private yard area to be relocated to a balcony off of the first floor main level living area. Is that correct? Yes. Um, this allows for a more desirable, more convenient and safer private yard area, correct? Yes. Okay, um, strict compliance with the code creates a practical difficulty as it would not allow this, correct? Correct. So, um, uh, in addition, uh, strict compliance with the code would result in similar and smaller units uh, it would not allow the property to yield a reasonable return. Is that your opinion? Yeah, correct. We're going to go in more detail on that in a minute, uh, Ed, but um, strict compliance with the regulations and standards of the zoning ordinance would create practical difficulties and hardship 
for the proposed development as the ordinance would require larger private yard areas at grade, which would result in smaller, less desirable and less marketable units. Isn't that true? Correct. Uh, the purpose of the requested variation is not based exclusively upon a desire to make money out of the project. Is that true? Yes. Um, you acquired the subject property in three phases, having purchased the first parcel in 1999, the second parcel a couple years after that, and the third parcel in 2014. Is that correct? Right. Um, earlier this year, you or the applicant, I should say, bought out your part partner's interest in the property. Is that correct? That's correct. But now McGreary Construction is the sole owner of the property. That's correct. Uh, your costs in the land after the buyout and after taxes, insurance, and other costs after, over the past 22 years is approximately $1.7 million. Is that correct? That's correct. And your hard construction cost estimates, estimates for the project, are approximately $5.625 million. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, your soft construction costs are estimated to be approximately 621,000, is that correct? Correct. Um, and you anticipate selling all 15 townhomes for approximately 8.9 million, which is uh, about an average of 590, 595,000 for each of the 15 units as an average price, is that correct? Correct. And you have experience because you developed and sold the units down the road that was previously testified to. Is that correct, Ed? Yes, I've been building for 20 years in Chicago. Um, and again, these figures are all based on market figures out, as well as the sale figures from the adjacent the property down the way. Um, is, is that correct? Right. Based on these figures, the anticipated return on investment will be approximately 12%. Is that correct? Correct. And you submitted a um, cost analysis, uh, a little more detail on this as part of your, uh, as part of the uh, findings of fact. Is that correct? Yes. Um, you also signed an affidavit summarizing your testimony, which was submitted as part of the findings. Is that correct? Yes. If you were to continue to testify here at this afternoon, would it be consistent with the facts contained in your affidavit? Yes. Uh, at this point, I have no further questions for Mr. McBrady, and I would welcome questions by the board. Have questions from the board for for anyone on uh, the special use or the the variance. <laughs> Okay, sounds like we've got a good amount of information here, um, Counselor. I was just gonna run through just a quick, I'll make it quick, but I wanted to put butt on just for some um, elaboration. Okay, okay, related to the variation. Okay, that's, that's correct. Okay, go ahead. Bud, you're, you're still under oath. Um, yes. You submitted, uh, you visited the site and prepared a report, correct? Yes, that's correct. Summarizing your opinions and conclusions, correct? Yes. And again, this type of residential use already exists in the neighborhood and will contribute to the overall economic viability of the property and the neighborhood. Is that correct? Yes, and, and I've included photos of the previously mentioned properties in my report. And it's your, in your opinion, Bud, uh, strict adherence to the code would significantly reduce the size of the units and in turn would not allow the property to yield a reasonable return. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, and then South King Drive has been historically associated with residential uses in the immediate neighborhood. Is that true? Yes, that's also true, as I mentioned. And East Pershing Road uh, previously offered some commercial space for local neighborhood users, such as small grocery storefront, cleaners, barber shops, uh, and uh, related consumer retail or office space. Is that correct? Yes. The majority of these former commercial spaces have all been raised and many of the remaining storefronts are vacant and are occupied by secondary business type tenants. Is that true? That's what I found, yes. Okay, uh, the district has limited pedestrian foot traffic in this immediate area um, that is necessary for a more successful retail and commercial store business. Is that true? Yes, that's also true. 
As such, the proposed development would reasonably reflect the highest and best use of the land and would not alter the essential character of the neighborhood. Is that your opinion? That's correct. This development will enhance it, in my opinion. Uh, if the strict regulation of the code were carried out, uh, Bud, uh, the private yard area would result in smaller units, which would in turn not allow the applicant to yield a reasonable return. Is that your opinion? That's correct. I mean, based upon the other testimony that has been presented here. Okay, and you heard the testimony of Ed relating to his costs and um, estimated uh, uh, return on investment. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. W would you agree with the testimony of Ed? Yes, I do. Um, at this point, um, I have no further questions for um, Bud, and I'd welcome questions by the board. Do you have any questions from the board? Okay, we've got plenty of information, everything we need, so we'll take this under consideration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Everyone stay safe and uh, warm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great, so let's go to calendar number 12-22-S. Um, as he gets situated, I'm going to go ahead and read the department's recommendation. For 12-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed gas station with an accessory one-story retail convenience store, provided that the special use is issued solely to the applicant, Fuel Line Management, LLC, and the development is consistent with the design and layout of the plans and drawings dated January 13th, 2022, prepared by Axios Architects Consultants. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you guys hear me? Yep, we can. Okay, great. Um, uh, good afternoon. Again, for the record, my name is Nick Fatikas. I'm one of the attorneys at the Law Offices of Sam Banks at 221 North LaSalle Street. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, D Fuel LLC. I'm sorry, D Fuel Incorporated. Uh, the applicant has a lease for the subject property at 5843 South Wentworth. Uh, the subject site contains um, approximately 30,099 square feet of total area, and today it's, it's currently vacant. The uh, lot itself is located immediately east of the Dan Ryan uh, Expressway at the intersection of West 59th Street and South uh, Wentworth. The applicant is proposing to develop the property with a new uh, four pump gas station and a one story retail convenience store building. In order to permit the project, the applicant is seeking a special use because the subject property is located in a split zone C1 1 and C2 1 zoning district. Uh, there, there will be three witnesses testifying uh, this afternoon on behalf of the applicant, Mr. Muhammad Abdallah. Uh, our project architect, Mr. Bill Kokalius, and our land use consultant, Mr. Kareem Musawir. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask to call my first witness, again, uh, Mohammed Abdallah. Yep. And with that, I just also want to state, if you are here to object for this matter, 12-22-S, um, please just raise your hand and we will um, we'll get you promoted. So with that, Mr. Abdullah, um, can you state your name and address, please? So you're on you're mute. So on mute. Yep. And I'm going to swear you in, even though you've been sworn in, just because this is a, a fully different matter. So if you could state your name and address, please. Mohammed Abdullah, 43 Old Creek, Bayless Park, Illinois, 60464. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mohammed, again, you are the president of D Fuel Incorporated? Yes. And again, that entity has a lease for the subject property at 5843 South Wentworth, is that right? Yes. As I explained in my introduction, you're planning to develop the uh, currently vacant lot with a new four pump gas station and retail convenience store building, right? Yes. And again, the proposed station would have um, four uh, fueling islands, a, uh, a 3,200 square foot retail building and off street parking for 11 cars, is that right? Yes. Your plans also incorporate code compliant landscaping, outdoor lighting, and perimeter fencing elements. Is that right? Yes. 
And in terms of your hours of operation, the station will be open and function 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Is that right? Yes. Uh, the retail store will maintain similar hours, but will likely close overnight for safety and security reasons. Is that yes. true? Correct. And Mohammed, um, oh, in, in terms of uh, employees, uh, approximately how many employees do you anticipate hiring um, to help you run this location? Uh, eight full-time and two part-time, total of 10 employees. Thank you. Uh, Mohammed. is it your understanding that my office filed witness statements on your behalf in this case? Yes. And if you were to continue to testify, would that testimony be consistent with the statements contained in your written uh, statements? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, it, it is a special use application. If I can just call Bill Kokalius for a few quick questions about the site, I think they're pertinent uh, for the board's consideration, uh, but I can do a content, condensed uh, question if that's all right. Yep, yes, please, Councilor. Thank you. Um, Bill, are you on? Yes, I am. Here, do you want to swear him in? Yeah, Bill, will you state your name and address, please? Uh, my name is Bill Kokalius, Axios Architects, 188 North Wall Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60606. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. And uh, Bill, you're the architect of record that prepared the building program for the proposed gas station and retail store, right? That's correct. And as we discussed um, with the applicant, uh, the or we discussed the improvements with the applicant, but in terms of site access, your plan relies on one curb cut from West 59th Street and a second separate curb cut on South Wentworth. Is that right? That's correct. And you were able to make that work in this case, um, specifically on the Wentworth frontage, because this segment of Wentworth is actually a one-way northbound street, correct? That's correct. Right up and across the street is the expressway. Right. And immediately immediately to the west is the expressway, correct? That's, that's correct, yes. And, and the lot itself is actually a bit unique, even though this is not a variation case. It's irregularly shaped around the corner of 59th and Wentworth, right? Yes, yes, there's a portion cut off, um, but that's, that was its natural uh, size when, uh, when, we, when we got the survey, correct. Yeah. So again, all of these features or, or uh, details really actually help ease the impact the gas station may have both on inbound and outbound traffic, specifically back onto what? That's correct, that's correct, yes. And then uh, lastly, Bill, uh, the plan also incorporates an on-site detention area on what would be the north side of the lot. Is that right? That is correct. And that detention area um, not only meets our requirement for the site, but also provides a little bit of separation which, between us and our closest neighbor to the north, which is a residential building on one right, correct? Yeah, yes, it is. And that detention area is going to be all green. got some landscaping on it, so it's a nice buffer. Right. So uh, the, the point is, in terms of an impact, that helps minimize any impact between our use and the closest neighbor to the north. That's correct. And uh, Bill, it's your understanding that my office filed witness statements on your behalf in this case? Yes. And if you were to continue to testify, that testimony would be consistent with the statements we provided. Is that right? That's correct. Thank you very much. Uh, my next witness, Chairman, is Mr. Kareem Musawir. Great. Okay, so Kareem, will you state your name and address, please? Yes, Kareem Usawir, 221 North LaSalle Street, where land use consultants in Chicago. Thank you very much. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. And we acknowledge um, Mr. Musawir's expertise. Great. Thank you, sir. Um, Kareem, the scope of your assignment in this case was to determine whether the requested special use would comply with the general criteria for special uses set forth in the code. Is that right? That's right. Uh, you physically inspected the subject property in the surrounding area? I did. And you prepared a written uh, report summarizing your findings and conclusions. Is that right? That's right. And it's your understanding that my office filed a copy of your written report with the zoning board already, correct? Correct. Uh, with respect to the special use standards, though, um, do you believe that the uh, criteria are being met with this request? Yes, I do. We have a 30,000 square foot lot, which is beyond the 20,000 square foot minimum requirement. Yeah, as you indicated, we have a substantial setback from the residential improvements to the north over 30, over, uh, 30 feet, over, excuse me, nearly 40 feet of setback. 
with that uh, retention area, and then there's the parking spaces. So, uh, and, and there are only two driveways. So yes, and then ne right next to the expressway, it is a use of convenience, and we believe that it meets the requirements. And again, just to uh, stress the point of impact, because uh, Wentworth is a one-way street northbound, you, you believe that the, the single curb cut is sufficient and again, will not have a negative impact on existing traffic patterns on that side of the property. That's correct. There's a uh, very uh, little parking on Wentworth as well because of the fact that it abuts the expressway. And then anybody who wants to continue to go uh, west can go out on the 59th street and continue westward. Great, thank you. Uh, and again, uh, Kareem, if you were to continue to testify this afternoon, um, would your testimony be consistent with the findings and conclusions contained in your written report? Yes, they would. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman, um, before I conclude, I did wanna point out that my office did send notice uh, to Alderman Taylor's office. The client, uh, Mr. Abdallah, also met directly with the Alderman. We're not aware of any pending objection. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that that was uh, at least pointed out for the record. And with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions you or the board members have about our project. Thanks, Councillor. Um, I was wondering just if um, Mr. Musa Rear could talk a little bit more about the uh, proximity to residential. Sure, Mr. Chairman. The uh, residential uh, improvements south of the, I mean, excuse me, north of the site are on the other side of what we're calling the retention pond area. And then there's a, uh, there's like, we have a 1,201 square foot landscape requirement. Actually, we're providing 7,400 and 4,500 square feet of landscaping. That's going to uh, substantially uh, mitigate any uh, interference with residential use. And then along with that, there's gonna be a, a six foot uh, wood uh, fence, board and board fence along that uh, north barrier and along the alley. Across the alley is a uh, religious institution. And um, again, there is the, the, uh, the in, in addition to the wooden uh, board and board fence, there's the area, there's the, the distance of the alley as well. And they have a off street parking lot just north of their improvement. And um, they don't uh, particularly use the alley for their ingress and egress, they use the street. Thank you very much. Um, other questions from the board? Hi, this is Jolene Saul. I just wanna confirm that I heard correctly. Is the gas station 24 seven, but the convenience store not? So in this case, um, we would anticipate, so the gas station, yes, is gonna operate 24 seven. The convenience store, we'd like to operate 24 seven, but what we've seen kind of in practice is that overnight for safety and security uh, purposes, the transactions could be limited to the front window um, so that people aren't coming in and out of the store. It's really, again, security for both our customers, but also our employees. And that seems to be more of a trend in the uh, gas station industry generally. So we would anticipate potentially closing access to the store overnight, maybe between um, 12 midnight and 5 a.m. and then reopen for you know the morning rush, coffee service, things like that that would happen in the retail store. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Sure, if I could also just clarify, I'm so so sorry, but briefly, the other point is we wanna have an active presence on the site 24 hours a day. So even though customers may not be able to access the store, there would always be an employee or two on site overnight uh, for, for security purposes as well. Thank you, Councillor. Um, one last call. Any other questions from the board? Okay, we'll take this under consideration. Thank you very much, everyone. Great. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to go to calendar number 14 22 S. Um, this is with Councillor Moore. I'm going to read the department's recommendation, but Meantime, um, if there is anyone on to 
object, please just raise your hand in the Zoom and we will make sure that you get promoted and are able to speak. So for calendar number 14-22-S, the Department of Planning and Development recommends approval of the proposed care slot. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, hopefully I have uh, Marlene David and Joe Ryan. I'm here. Yep, and I see, um, I see Marlene David as well. Um, would you, uh, Mr. Chairman, would you mind uh, swearing her in? Yes, uh, Ms. David, will you state your name and address, please? And you're on mute. Sorry about that. It's uh, Marlene David, 303 West Division, Apartment 726, Chicago, Illinois 60610. Thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you, Ms. David. Thank you. Uh, Marlene, um, will you tell the board how long you've been a licensed cosmetologist? I've been doing hair for 17 years now. Okay. And um, you've always worked for other people? Yes. Until this last year, I've been uh, renting my own space, a chair. Okay. But but even there, you're you're in someone else's space. It's not your. Yes. You, you're basically a, a, a tenant a, rather than having your own independent business. Yes, correct. OK. And um, you found this little 700 square foot storefront up on Halstead. And it's your dream to uh, actually have your own salon. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And you would uh, bring your existing clientele with you, but then you also would hope to rent a chair or two to uh, another someone like you've been all these years who's who's starting out in the industry. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And so uh, you and I worked out a lease with the landlord and we've applied to the board for a special use. And if you get it, you would um, do the build out or the landlord would do the build out he agreed to. And uh, you'd start business in the spring. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. And uh, you and I worked out an affidavit where we addressed each of the criteria necessary for the board to grant your request for special use. And if you were to continue to testify, you'd testify consistently with it. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Is Joe Ryan available? He is. Okay, good. Uh, you, sir, at my request, did a study of uh, this location and whether or not uh, it could, uh, it would have an, the granting of a special use for a hair salon would have a negative effect on the surrounding property values and whether it could meet the other criteria necessary for the board to grant a special use at this location. Is that right? Uh, yes. And I also know that I'm still under oath from uh prior testimonies. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, um, Joe is uh, sworn in and his expertise is recognized. And, and what were the, what was the sum and substance of your findings in your report? Well, I examined each of the criteria uh, that the board needs to examine to grant a special use. Uh, I detailed information on each of the criteria and found that uh, it passed with flying colors. Okay. And it will not have a negative effect on the surrounding properties. Is that right? None whatsoever. And there's, there's sufficient density in this area to support uh, another hair salon, do you believe? Yes, I, I, I put the uh, <clears throat> demographics into the report and, and found that they were more than sufficient to support more than one hair salon <clears throat> or and personal if, use in this uh, neighborhood. And if you were to continue to testify, you testify consistently with your report that is on file with the board. Is that right? Correct. Mr. Chairman, that's the essence of our case. Both of these witnesses are available for questions. Thank you very much. Um, any questions from the board? Okay, we'll take this under consideration and thank you very much uh, for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, hello.
All right, we're going to do one. Um, yeah, uh, we're going to do one more um, matter that's actually um, two two matters in one before breaking for a lunch. So I'm going to call calendar numbers 15-22-Z and 16-22-Z, um, which are with Fred Augustine. While Fred is getting situated, I just want to note, um, again, if there's any objectors on these matters on 5806 South Blackstone, please raise your hand and we will make sure that you have the opportunity to speak. I don't see the counselor in, oh yeah, I do. Fred, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, go right ahead. All right, I just wanna make sure my witnesses are on. Uh, John Potter and then Dr. Stephen Small, are you guys on? Yeah, I'm on for John Potter. Okay. I'm here too. Okay, uh, Stephen, are you on? Hello, Stephen. Uh, I just promoted someone named S D S. So maybe that's him. That probably is him. Yeah. All right. Hi. Okay. Hi, Stephen. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Fred Augustin. I'm um, here on behalf of the applicant, Stephen Small. Uh, applicant is the owner of the property at 5806 South Blackstone. It's currently improved with an existing home, which is also known as the Helstein House. Um, it was designed by the renowned architect Bertrand Goldberg. Um, applicant wants to maintain this home. However, it does need updating and um, the applicant does need more space. So his plan is to rehab the existing home while also constructing uh, two additions. Uh, a three-story addition will be built towards the southern end of the property, while a two-story addition will be built on the northern portion of the home on top of the existing garage. Um, just besides the historical aspect of this home, um, what makes it unique is that the home was built towards the rear of the property line. Um, so thus it has a humongous front yard. Um, the proposed additions will be positioned with the home um, and will also be located towards the towards the rear property line. Um, as you can see, because of that, the existing home does pose a hardship um, in trying to um, comply with the rear setback, rear yard open space, and side setbacks. So in order to do this project, we are seeking a variation to reduce the rear setback from 44.56 feet to uh, 0 0.99 feet, uh, reduce the combined side setback requirement from 10 feet to 7.65 feet, uh, reduce the south side setback from four feet to three feet, as well as reducing the rear yard open space from the required 487 square feet to zero. So here with me this afternoon is the applicant, Dr. Stephen Small, um, as well as our project architect, John Potter. Um, his colleague, Bob Zuber, is also on the line, just in case to answer any additional questions. So first witness is um, Dr. Small. So it's Dr. Small, please state your name and address for the record. Stephen, are you on? You know, we had him, I'm trying to... We, we lost him, he just joined back and I'm promoting him. Okay. All right. Stephen, are you with us? I believe we lost him again. Okay. Um, should I just go to the architect while we wait on him, if that's all right? Um, so Stephen is the applicant, correct? He is the applicant. Yeah, so we need him on the whole yeah. time. Okay, all right. Let's, uh, let's give it a minute.
I'm going to give it like three minutes or else we're going to break for lunch. Okay. All right. Okay, I see him as attendee. I'm gonna promote. Steven, let us know when you're on. Um, you're gonna need to unmute. I'm unmuted. Okay, there we go. All right. So I keep I'm sorry, but I keep dropping in and out and trying to reconnect. Okay, well, we have you now. So, uh, so Stephen, if you could uh, state your name and address for the record for the board. Uh, Stephen, you're muted. Um, I just I just dropped out and had to reconnect, and it keeps unmuting me whenever the whole thing fails. Uh, Stephen D. Small, fifty eight oh six South Blackstone Avenue, Chicago six oh six three seven. All right, and you are the owner of the property, is that correct? Yes. And your so, plan do, is to- do you, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? Steven, are you still on? I see you on. Um, Fred, if there's a quick way to get him to call in instead, that would be easy or else yeah. I'm just going to go straight to lunch. And yeah. Get, and that's what I, get, I, I, I tried to auto that. So he called in, he's saying he's muted. So how does he do it if he called in, I guess? He should push star nine. Instead of promoting him, I'm just letting push him star nine. from attendee. Yep. Yeah. Uh, dial the call in number and then it'll prompt you to do star nine. Mr. Chairman, did you say you were going to break for lunch? Yeah, Elder Woman, we're going to see if we um, can get this person on, but we're having some connection issues. Um, and um, either way, we're going to be breaking for lunch shortly. Okay. I think uh, Stephen Small is thinking calling in means joining the Zoom again. I think. He has to use the telephone to dial into the meeting using the phone yeah. number. And I believe he, he's doing that right now. He, he told me we just got off the phone, so. Let's give it a shot.
Uh, Stephen Small, if that's you on the phone, you have to press star six on your phone to unmute. Oh, star, I thought it was star nine. Sorry. No, that's that's my fault. I thought it was star nine. Star nine is to raise your hand while you're on the phone. Yep, so star six if you're the 773. Okay. Um, seems like something's not working. So I am going to make sure we don't waste too much time and I'm going to call uh, recess for lunch right now. Okay. So we, we will reconvene at, at 210 and just make sure everyone is ready then. So um, again, 210 p.m. Uh, Commissioner Hello. Torres. Is that Stephen? It's always just in the nick of time, every time this happens. Uh, uh, yeah, Hello? Is, that, is that Steven? Hello, I'm, uh, can you hear me? It's Steve Small. Yes, yes. can, you, can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, okay, sorry. I get, the board is gonna be mad at me because I called lunch, but I'm gonna change my mind because we already started this. Um, but if you drop it all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delay it. So um, will you state your name and address, please? Stephen D. Small. 5806 Blackstone, Chicago. Okay, thank you. And do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. Okay, so Dr. Small, so your plan is to obviously keep the existing home, but build two additions to it, is that correct? Yes. All right, um, and one of the additions will be a three-story addition towards the southern end of the home, is that right? Yes. As well as a two-story addition that will be on the northern end of the property on top of the existing garage. Is that correct? Yes. All right. So since the existing home um, is already constructed towards the rear of the property, the proposed additions will also be located at the rear property. Is that correct? Yes. So which is obviously the reason why we're here today, because it will be difficult to comply with the uh, rear, rear yard setback, the rear yard open space, as well as the uh, side setbacks. Is that correct? Yes. And if we can, on your behalf, or my office did submit an affidavit, you execute, is that correct? Yes. And if your testimony continued here today, that would be consistent with the facts presented in your affidavit, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Uh, my next witness is Mr. John Potter. Mr. Potter, are you on? Yes, I am. All right. Mr. Potter, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, John Potter, 2838 uh, Central, Evanston, Illinois. Okay. You're a licensed architect in the state of Illinois. Is that correct? That is correct. Right. Thanks. And, and Mr. Potter, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth in today's proceedings? I do. Thank you. So, Mr. Potter, um, the subject property is improved with a historical single family residence. Is that correct? That is correct. So, in your professional opinion, obviously working with, with such a structure can pose a challenge. Is that right? That is correct. So can you briefly just walk through the board briefly what the proposed plan is for the house in terms of rehab and the additions? Yes. So the intent of the renovation is to maintain the existing uh, historic Bertram Goldberg house. And in order to do that, we're requesting to reduce the side yard and the rear yard setbacks so that the addition can be placed in the rear of the property and so that we can preserve obliquely as much of the existing house as possible. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, on your behalf, my office did submit an affidavit, is that correct? That is correct. And if we did continue with your testimony, or, uh, we'd be consistent with the facts presented in your affidavit, is that correct? That is correct. All right, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I have no further questions. We're here to answer any questions the board may have. Yeah, so, you know, I had a note in here, if you could just, um, if either the, I think it would go to the architect, could explain a little bit more on um, the south setback reduction request and what triggers that. Is that the addition as well? That is correct, yes. 
Okay, so, so if we could, yeah, go right ahead. I'd like to hear a bit more. Uh, the, the, the challenge is, is that the, a garage is allowed in a rear yard setback. However, um, once we reduce the required rear yard setback, then a, the garage is actually in the, uh, within the, or is outside of it. So we've placed the addition on top of the garage. Obviously it's more economical, but it also preserves more of the front of the house. Just to expand on that, Mr. Okay. Chairman, this is Fred Augustin. Um, you know, the south addition is obviously matching the rear wall of the existing home. So by building yeah. out, um, you know, we are, as a result, have to be set back three feet. So okay, because um, the wall, the walls of the existing home are um, uh, currently non-conforming. Is that correct? That's correct. That is correct. Yeah. Great. Other questions from the board on this one? Uh, this is Commissioner Esposito. Has there been conversation? Is this a landmark building? And whether or not it is, has there been conversation with the preservation community on this proposal? Ron, if you want to answer that. It, it, it is currently not. However, uh, the intent of the renovation is to restore it back to its original and the owner is receptive to uh, preservation or a landmark status of the building in the future. So this addition has not been discussed per se with the preservation community? Um, it has not, that is correct. It has, yeah, it has it. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Hey, Fred, did you want to get, um, I think you have one more witness. Do you want to um, get them on? Uh, I think the only third person was Bob Zuber. He's a colleague of John Potter. Okay. We're just, he was just there to answer any questions in the event John had to drop out. So. Okay, great. Then I'm just going to offer up uh, one more opportunity if the board has any questions. Okay, we've got what we need here. So thank you very much everyone for your time and we'll uh, take it under consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep, Appreciate thank it. You. Thanks. All right, we are gonna take um, a break and uh, for lunch and it's gonna go to, let me do some math, sorry. Um, it's gonna be a 40 minute break, which brings us to uh, two, my brain is dead, everyone. I think it brings us to 218. <laughs> um, Commissioner Toya Seconds, Commissioner Saul. Yes. Perfect. Um, Commissioner Rao. Yes. Commissioner Esposito. Yes. Commissioner Toya. Yes. Thank you very much. And we will see everyone back at 218 p.m. <laughs>